Warning. Warning. This podcast has strong language, opinions, and may cause some people to become incredibly butt hurt. Discretion is highly advised. Just, you know, so you don't get your feels hurt. Welcome back to Pop Chaos. I'm Jay. I'm Brian. And I'm Madison. And my voice crackled. I don't know why. Um, tonight we are going to be talking about something that Brian and I have wanted to talk about for, oh damn, I'd say near 20 years or longer, uh, wouldn't you say? We, yeah, this is some shit we grew up with. Yeah, this is, uh, Madison is new to it. Well, I wouldn't say you're completely new to it because, uh, it happened when you were a kid as well, but just not to the links that it happened in the 80s. Right. Yeah. Um, because, you know, we talked about this at work the other day, the Pokemon and uh, Harry Potter stuff. So, uh, for all of you out there that don't know, Deception of a Generation is what we're talking about tonight. The great satanic panic of the 80s. Deception of a Generation was a video that these people put out. Um, in my Eagle's opinion, Nest Ministry. Eagle's Nest, thank you, Brian. Yes. Um, in my opinion, I think it was a uh, a money grab. That's what I think it was. That's the kind of vibe. I, I honestly think we've we've talked about this, Jay. Honestly, I think that um, it was just a slap at whatever was popular at the time, or whatever they assumed was popular at the time. That's exactly what I think. Uh, do I think that there are people out there with the best intentions? <coughs> Excuse me for coughing. Uh, yeah, I do. I, I think that there are people out there with the best intentions of trying to protect kids and, and that sort of thing. But I, I, I think these people here, and, and we'll point things out as we go and watch the video. Uh, I'm hoping that this is not only going to be a podcast, but we're hoping to put this on Daily Motion, possibly YouTube, maybe BitChute, a few other places. And if Madison wants, I can chop up some pieces and we can throw it up on Twitter as well. A little, you know, couple yeah, little clips or something. Right. Um, but just to let everybody know, yes, we are on Facebook. Yes, we are on Twitter. We are uh, maybe possibly uh, open to the idea of opening a Discord server for people to come in and join and talk and that sort of thing. Well, that'll be later on down the road. But back to this bullshit. So... Uh, Madison, any questions for Brian or myself before we go ahead and get started on this bullshit? No, let's uh, let's dive into it. I'm, I'm curious to see uh, what this is all about. Uh, well, uh, I think the first thing they talk about, believe it or not, is... Well, I ain't even going to mention it. It'll just be a surprise. All right. Yeah. So, are we ready, gentlemen? Yes, sir. Yes. All right, here we go. Lovely 80s VHS quality. You gotta love it. Yeah, the, the white line going through the video there. That's yeah. great. From the Eagle's Nest. And YouTube, in case you get pissed off, this is in full uploaded on your platform. Don't fucking copyright strike us like you did the Spaghetti Ho because it's already on your website. <laughs> <laughs> fucking YouTube. program combines the dynamic ministry of God's Word the discussion of contemporary issues and the contemporary issues. Of yes. Power. And I, I don't know if anyone else here is, is religious or not, but that's irrelevant really to the conversation at hand. I'm getting dizzy from all those panels spinning around. Yeah, look at it. Do you think this is like early PowerPoint they, they made here? I don't even think PowerPoint was invented back then. <laughs> No, don't insult PowerPoint. In the yeah. past several years, the Eagle's Nest Ministries has exposed certain things like... Direct from the disco, it's Gary! Okay, we are hearing a little bit of feedback on your room there, Madison. If I say Sorry. something like wicked okay. witches and demon clouds and spell books... And even demon clouds? I've never heard of a demon cloud before. What yeah, what's a demon cloud? A uh, he never explains. Watch now. Oh God! Here we go, Scooby Doo. Where do we start, Mr. And Brian, who is this base on right here? That is Vincent Price. Thank you. Destroy the world. We've got some witches to splash. Voice by Vincent Price too. I'm afraid I cannot. 
They're like, we're not into witches either, sir. We'll stick with you. <laughs> if you wish, I'm going to hunt down that demon mist in the zone of eternal evil where the dark demon mist are trapped. I mean, they're gonna go into all of this talk about demons and shit when they get back to Gary and discount JBL here. But it's Scooby Doo. Scooby Doo was always about like that's that, what it's based around. Exactly. I mean, you know, there's monsters and stuff. I mean, I grew up with Scooby Doo. That's what it's based around. I don't. I, I don't that's that's a price was a horror icon. Yeah. Now keep in mind, Evil Zone, that's one thing they're going to harp on a lot. Okay. I swear this has been edited. <laughs> you know, you've been watching a Scooby-Doo cartoon, and it's amazing to me to see what's being brought forth in a cartoon. We've seen spell books, occultic amulets, we saw a crystal ball, astral projection to the Evil Zone, all of this in a children's cartoon. Now, I have got a guest today, his name is Phil Phillips, he's from Texas. Okay, let's go ahead and pause right here for just a second. Okay, so, uh, Phil Phillips here. Brian and I did a little research on this guy. Uh, do you want to tell a little bit about what we found, Brian? In addition to being a tremendous asshole, um, <laughs> Phil Phillips has uh, written several books about occultic and demonic influences in popular culture uh power rangers was a, a target when it was pot when it got really hot in the 90s targeted power rangers yes holy shit he yeah, also that... tar did a, yeah he, he did I... a book called turmoil in the toy box right but i think oh. he did one specifically on power rangers didn't he yes he did, he did one later on power rangers um this is the kind of guy that this is the kind of shit I grew up with. A uh, kid in my neighborhood, his family was was believed in this kind of shit. I mean, you could, as a, as a kid, you know, watching these shows, I never thought of that shit. Like, I never looked too much into shows like that. I'm just like, hey, this is Scooby Doo. You know, I'm enjoying the show. They're gonna catch the bad guy or the monster or whatever. I'm not looking into fucking spell books and shit. Exactly, exactly. But they're going to get more into that as we go. And I don't want the podcast to take all night. But like I said, if anybody has anything to add at any point, just tell me. I will pause and we will talk about this stuff. Because I, I, I guarantee you, once they get into like He-Man and Sectars and stuff like that, we're going to have a lot to say. Okay. All right, so let's see what they say about Scooby-Doo now felt called to study the effects of cartoons and children's toys and even TV programs upon our children today. And I'd like to Love this guy's come over there. Phil, yeah. Uh, God bless you, and it's uh, good to it's see you today. It's a pleasure being here today. Yeah. Now, Phil, I'll tell you what. 14 years ago, Scooby-Doo was a lot different than what we see today. No, it wasn't. And I can hardly recognize it. Can you tell me what's going on in this cartoon? Yes, there's a, there's We're still a getting a little bit of feedback on your end. In the cartoon and toy industry, most people don't realize... I'll be on my end. It may be. Deal directly with the occult, and 40% of the toys on the market have occultic influence, and these are the most popular. And these Always have occultic influence. Actually, a mirror of the cartoons. Is that correct? Right. They are released oh, yeah. together. It's a form of marketing where the toys and the cartoons are released together to create this popularity for the toys. Now. You have a concern, I know that all of this is a Okay, I'm hearing somebody's uh, video on, on the other end. Sorry, I don't know if it's mine. I'm trying to keep my phone away from the TV as good as possible. Probably mine, because I... Pause it for a second. All right. But yeah, so... Uh, these guys, they... They got a lot to say about Scooby-Doo, as we just heard... Talking about, I mean, uh, what's his name? Uh, not Phil, but the other guy. What's his name? Gary. Gary. Yeah, yeah, talking about, oh, Scooby-Doo was a lot different back in my day. Was it? It wasn't. Was it? <laughs> uh, oh. Scooby-Doo, basically the ghosts were real until they were proven not to be. Right. right. That's the Scooby-Doo. That's how it's always been. Yeah. But, okay, but, but you got Vincent Price, who is real. And he's not really a vampire or a ghost or a demon or something. I mean, that's just, it's, 
I don't know. Weird. It was it was a play off of his horror roots. Right. I mean, Vincent Price had a had a very very well sell uh, high selling shrunken head kit where you take an apple and let it shrivel and put like facial features on it and it would make a shrunken head. Yeah, kind of like Mister Potato Head. Yeah, that's cool. All right, here we go. We'll listen to some more on Scooby Doo here. With a viewing audience as much as 16 million children each time it's aired. And so we're seeing a vast effect on the whole United States and other countries around the world through these cartoons and toys. Millions of children now watching occultic cartoons and then going out and buying occultic toys. Now, could. Okay. Um, I, have a, I have a problem. Okay, go ahead. He's talking about 16 million children. Yeah. Where where are the parents? Notice the parents are never never mentioned. Well, yeah, I, well I, I have another question. Until recently, okay. when could you go out and buy Scooby Doo action figures and toys? You couldn't. Thank you. They they did not merchandise Scooby Doo all that much. I mean, you had some plushies. I still feel like they. They merchandise it that much now. Well, I mean, they, they, they've done some figures and stuff. Right. Uh, but you I know. mean, you go to the store, I mean, I don't really see much Scooby-Doo. Oh, yeah. There's not a lot of Scooby-Doo merch, uh, merch out these days, unfortunately. But I'd say in the, in the, in the um, 60s, 70s, and 80s, most of what you had were comic books and coloring books. Mm. Like I said, the occasional plush. You know, yeah, maybe like bed sheets or uh, yeah, okay. you know, pajamas, Cl- stuff like that. And yeah, pajamas exactly, and- exactly. So yeah. I mean, we've already caught him in something, and we hadn't even been watching it for ten minutes. I mean, he's talking about you know these kids watch these cartoons and they go out and buy these toys, which I know they're trying to segue into later on, like talking right. about He Man and shit like that. But anyway, all right, we'll continue going. Could we say that there is witchcraft and occultic practices? that are actually being portrayed in these cartoons? Oh yes, the witchcraft and and occult practices are not made believe. They're taken from actual witchcraft, actual pagan religions, levitation, mind control, astral projection, and other forms of of witchcraft. Uh, pause. Yeah. He says this is all real. All the, all the spells are real. Right. Cytosaurs. Yeah, thank you. Name, name one that's real. You can't do it because it doesn't exist. Exactly. Um, it's not like they're not chanting spells in Scooby Doo in the Thirteen Ghosts of Scooby Doo. No, no, they're not. Uh, it's all made up. I mean, I got I got news for them. Brian's one hundred percent right. I mean, I who what producer for a children's cartoon is going to take the time? to go out and find a, a, a coven of Wiccans and be like, hey, man, you know, I'm not a Wiccan and I'm not part of your religion or your culture, but can I have your spells? Can, I want to put them in a kid's cartoon. Is that cool? They're, they're not going to take the time to do that because they're, they're trying to make money off of it. They're just trying to pump it out for kids to watch. Exactly. Hey, so. you know, what gets me is even the spells in Harry Potter sound like a, a combination of pig Latin and... Uh, in Latin, it's so true, though. <laughs> it is. I mean, you got. I mean, I'm not that familiar with Harry Potter, but God dang, people! Le- come Le- on. Levioso. Yeah, I think Levioso is a spell in Harry Potter. I'm not sure. I, I've I've seen the movies. When God I read you- the first book, yeah, basically. I, I swear, when we when we played D and D when I was a kid, we if we needed to chant a spell, we usually read ingredients off of a, a off of a can of soup. That's brilliant. <laughs> oh man, when, I, it. when when we used to play D and D, but like I would play uh, the Star Wars role playing game when it came out, you know, in the late nineties, early two thousands, um, and I would make up my own planets and my own characters and stuff. I would get uh, prescription bottles and i would like oh, yeah. change some of the letters in a prescription medicine and be like oh well this is you know 
whatever, you know. So yeah, I mean, and the, you what can't tell me that. that yeah, I mean, you you can't tell me these people didn't do the same shit. I mean, you just yeah, can't. I'm, I'm yeah. guaranteed. All right, well, let's let's not dwindle on Scooby Doo. Let's let's get to the meat and potatoes here. Portrayed right. within the cartoons. All of these things are portrayed in the cartoons? Yes, pretty much so. Well, then we could suspect that there's some kind of a spiritual force behind these things to program our children. Nice to know they went to Goodwill to get their chairs. Yeah. It almost looks like they just set the studio up in Goodwill. It's what it looks like to me. It really does. I mean, this you would think by looking at their attire that this shit came out in the 70s, but no, this was the 80s. Oh my god, here we go. More Scooby-Doo. Uh, you know, I mean, I like Scooby-Doo. My wife, that's like her favorite thing in the world, but I really don't want to dwindle on Scooby-Doo. You guys want to skip forward a little bit? Yeah, we can. I think, yeah, I think we ought to. We, we pretty much addressed Scooby-Doo. Yeah. Enough All right, let's see if we can skip forward here a little bit. It's becoming obvious to me what's going on, and I wonder how did you get started? I love how oh, okay, here we go. Here we go. He's never heard of this. Well, okay, here we go. Uh, I'm going to stop again real quick. But yeah, this, if I'm not mistaken, Brian, this is the part where uh, Discount JBL talks about his uh, qualifications and everything, and I'm going to play it. Uh, I wanted us to talk about that because I think that's fairly interesting as well. All right, here, yeah. Here we go. Going on, and I wonder how did you get started in exploring all of this? I mean, how did you get into analyzing the toy industry? Well, it was very unusual. I was in the process of going on the mission field and working yeah, my is. way through that and speaking in different churches. And Lord directed me to go on a 14 day fast. And during this fast, I did something very unusual. I walked into a toy store. Mm -hmm. uh, Convenient. When I walked in the toy store, oh, I was my God. faced with a toy holding an occult symbol in its hand. And this got my curiosity up, so I purchased the toy. And um, the what was the occult? Notice he does not produce the toy. That, that's that's the point. I, that's why I paused. That was the point I was going to make. What toy did you buy, and what was it holding? I would love to know. Yeah, he well, don't want to. By, he doesn't by the way, that. did you notice he went on a fourteen-day fast? I noticed that. I mean, I think. Uh, why is he dead? For fourteen days, I'll probably be seeing shit. That's just me. Well, Madison, Ma no, no, hang on. Madison just hit the nail on the head. He just hit the nail on yeah. the head, man. Think about it. Say that again, Madison. Say it again. If you don't eat or drink for 14 days, you're probably going to be seeing shit. I mean, maybe the toy was talking to him in tongue or something. I don't know. Why Why was he in a toy store to begin with? I think he's a creepy <laughs> perv myself. He just, he just stumbled in there, you know? I mean... You can look at this guy and tell. I mean, this is the 80s. See, the collecting was not really a big thing back then. So if you don't have children, which, I mean, maybe he does. I mean, I don't know. I don't know. He kind of looks, he does kind of look like a pedophile. I think Brian, I think Brian was on cue with that. You know, you know who this guy, I mean, not by how he looks, but just the, the facial expressions and just how he presents himself. You ever seen Robocop 2? Yes. Okay, you know the part where Robocop shoots his gun, he says, thank you for not smoking? Yeah. Yes. Okay, that guy, I am convinced that guy was a pedophile. I, I'm convinced, because he was, he was, no, he was watching those children, and he was smiling, and then Robocop shoots his gun around, and the bullets go around his head, and he's freaking out, and he says, thank you for not smoking. I, I, I'm convinced that guy, I'm, I'm convinced Robocop knew that guy was a pedophile, but that that's... Just, just look at the smugness on this guy. That's, that's, that's what I get, you know. But I mean, I, I, I'm not trying to say definitively, yeah, this guy's a pedophile or anything. But it is just, I don't know, kind of creepy. In, in all, in all seriousness, he has a smug arrogance to him <laughs> that he's right, you're wrong. I exactly. mean, I just, I'm still hung up on the fact that he stumbled into a toy store. Yeah, yeah, and don't forget, God told him to. I mean, like I said, I, I mean, I don't know. I mean, I know Brian. <clears throat> I don't know about you. I don't know if you're religious or not. I'm religious, you know, and I find that disconcerting. That's that's just that's just. Yeah, weird. I mean, I agree with you, Jay. I, I agree with you. That is that is strange. <laughs> okay, all right. Let's see what else Chucklefuck has to say. All right, here we go. <laughs> book that was with it, and it was occultic practices within the comic book. So I talked about it in the church I was in that night. But I didn't think much of it. I threw it in the back seat of my car. 
about three days later I was driving home from these series of services and the Lord spoke to me about what happens when a child plays with a toy and how they project themselves with their imagination into a toy and they give it life, character, abilities, talents and they set the surrounding Wow, they're using their imagination Now, you're saying a child actually projects himself into the toy Alright, I'm going to stop right there Madison and, and Brian, both of you, I'm going to ask you both the same thing. Because I know the answer for me. When you were a kid, all right, Brian, when you were a kid and you bought your G.I. Joe figures, let's say you bought Duke and Cobra Commander, okay? Keep that in mind. Madison, yeah. when you were a mm-hmm. kid, I don't know what toys you had when you were a kid. I know, like I said, that you like Pokemon. No, I, but I played with G.I. Joe and shit when I was All right, running. perfect. All right, so Brian's got Duke and Cobra Commander. You've got Snake Eyes and Storm Shadow. Okay. Yes, you have right. that right on there. Awesome. Perfect. And meanwhile, I'm over here with Optimus Prime and Megatron. Okay. Did you ever once, did you ever one time take Duke, Brian, did you ever take Duke and say, this is me? You know, I'm good at jerking off. So now Duke's good at jerking <laughs> off. I mean, <laughs> did you project yourself into the toy? I mean, seriously? And, and, and Madison, did you ever take Snake Eyes and say, you know, I, I'm good at taking a massive dump. Now Snake Eyes is good at taking a massive dump. I mean, Absolutely I'm being serious. Not. Absolutely not. Well, he, he's describing someone playing with, he's describing pretend play and play patterns but he's he's describing it in reverse he's the, describing yeah, it as if your soul is leaving your body and going into the toy right see, see when i played with optimus prime i pretended you know that optimus prime that i saw on the tv show exactly. was the toy that i was playing with exactly. i played like optimus prime you know it's it i wasn't projecting myself i wasn't thinking oh i'm optimus prime well, I mean, when you play with these toys when you're younger, it's your it's your escape from reality. Like, okay, like playing video games nowadays. Like, obviously, you're not the character. You're playing the games to, you know, to play as that character. Like you said, to take the character exactly. from the show and actually play with the character and act like he's the character from the show. Exactly. When, when I was a kid, we would play as Optimus Prime or Bumblebee or Snake Eyes or Darth Vader or Han Solo. We would pretend to be these characters, right. but we didn't. But I didn't run around going, "My name is Brian, and I am a Jedi, and I'm going to kill Darth Vader." No, <laughs> I was Luke Skywalker or Han Solo. Yes, or, yes. right. But, but I was my favorite character. I, I just figured something out. I just literally <clears throat> figured something out. This chuckle fuck. Do you know what he's created in the '80s before any of these assholes on the internet got a hold of it? Do you know what this guy just single handedly created? Fan fiction. Thank you. Self insert fan fiction. Self insert fan fiction. That's exactly or, mm. original character Donut Steel. <coughs> that's yep. that's exactly what this guy just created. But anyway, all right, we'll get back to it. Can you can you say that again? Because I think that's yes. That's please do. Please don't. That, yeah, don't say it. This kind of effect upon the child and even the toys. Yeah, the the toy is a lifeless hunk of plastic. And it only comes to life with that projection of the imagination into a toy. Yeah. And they give it life, character, abilities, talents, and set the surroundings around the toy. So the child vicariously oh, lives through That's that. ridiculous. <laughs> Go ahead, Brian. I'm going to say this. You may not have thought of it. Oh, I'm sure I he did. Just described, he just described you as a god. Okay, no, I didn't think about that, but... <laughs> Wow! Yeah, that wow that that puts a whole new context, a, a whole new spin on this whole thing. You're like the you're like the hand. The way- you're like the white hand from uh, Super Smash Bros. I was getting ready to say that. Yeah, yeah. Because because he the way he's talking, you endow you you endow the character. It's a lifeless hunk of plastic. Okay. It's a lifeless lump of clay until you, give you in breathe life into it until yeah. you rise it from the dust. <laughs> Well, see, and and I was going to say this is this is he is actually making this more sacrilegious than the people that created the stuff ever could have even dreamed of. Because Brian's absolutely right. I mean, it says in the Bible that God created man 
He sculpted mm-hmm. him from clay in his own image. And then Eve, you know, took one of Adam's ribs, gave her yep. life. Okay, you know, I'm not trying to get biblical here, but that's what this is all about. But Brian is absolutely right. He specifically said these are lifeless pieces of plastic. Okay, there's not much different when you look at it fundamentally between a, a glop of plastic and a glop of clay. Okay, you know, so he's... To me, it, it just struck me. He sounds like he's describing a god. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, that's exactly what it sounds like. Oh, yeah. I never thought about that, but that's um, that's a good point. That's that's a much better point than what I was going to make. I was going to say, man, he's giving kids of the '80s way too much uh, credit. Uh, credit because I mean, I did not create Optimus Prime or Skeletor or Snake Snake Eyes or Storm Shadow. I mean, I, I couldn't have thought of all that. I mean, I could have, but it would have been shit. You know, the mm-hmm. people at Marvel and DC and and all these other companies that created these characters, man, if I was them, I'd take offense because, you know, uh, all the writing that they did for these characters, is, I guess it just went out the window. And when little Susie and little Bobby got their figures, and it was like, oh, right, right, his name's Jim Bob Toenail now. I breathe life into him. Yeah. Yeah. Come here. Come here. <laughs> okay. All right. Here we go. <laughs> here we go. Toy. Yes, very much so. Mm-hmm. And the Lord told me that that children were being affected by these things, and that I was to do something about it, which proceeded in me starting studying this material over two and a half years ago. Well, we've seen over the last several years a, a slow, subtle uh, occultic influence in our cartoon. Now, keep that it's word in mind: occultic, occultic, occultic. Uh, that that word shows up in this script more than any other word in the English language. Cultic. And now, to quote Inigo Montoya from uh, Princess Bride, yeah, I do not think this word means what you think it means. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> All right, here we go. This blatant turn towards the occult and witchcraft really took on its momentum. Well, there's a cartoon called He-Man and the Masters of the Universe. Oh, here we go. Mm, now, He-Man. He-Man and the Masters of the Universe really broke the ground wait, wait. on... The Masters of the Universe? Occultism. In fact, Are you familiar with He-Man at all, Madison? All three major networks, yes, I loved way, He-Man when I was younger. Perfect. ...through independent TV stations as a first-run cartoon, and it covers 95% of America. So you're saying He-Man was like a, an occultic forerunner to really blast go, into the public's <laughs> eye. Oh, yeah, they, the cartoon uh, people have no problem getting another one through. They say, well, it's just like He-Man. Hmm. And, but He-Man was such a tremendous success. In fact, it got as much as a 22-point Nielsen rating in many areas when it was shown. And that's market control, as you know. Well, I think what we should do is... Let's watch on the screen right now and see an opening to a... What the hell are you going to watch it on if you don't watch it on the screen? Overtones as we They're nice <laughs> 80s CRT <laughs> box <laughs> television there that weighs enough to kill a small child. Yeah, no shit. <laughs> that skull is evil, man. You know, it's not like we don't all have them in our oh, heads. It's a cultic. It is, man. It is. Are you, are you not seeing the same thing I'm seeing here? I am... Oh, I'm seeing it, man. It's he made so that cool. pussy huge. Oh, my God. <laughs> he breathed life into it. That's the whole clip that they watch. Here we're seeing a transformation <laughs> of He-Man from a wimp, like a Clark Kent type of character, to the He-Man, and he says something uh, like the power by the power of Grayskull. Is that correct? Yes. What you just seen is <laughs> He-Man uh, being trans. I have to pause for a second and just say, okay, I know they don't give a shit about the subject matter, but literally five seconds ago, he watched a 20-second clip, and he didn't even remember what it said because he's so focused on bashing it. All right. Yeah, yeah that's ridiculous. Dude, he... Go ahead, go ahead. He he didn't do th- this. This chucklehead didn't do his research because if he had, he would have known that He Man was basically based. It was based on Conan. Well, yeah, but see, that's another problem right there because Conan has sorcery. Re- well, Conan had sorcery and witches and all that. So I mean, just, just let's let's not give them more fuel for their fire. I mean, yeah. <coughs> 
But yeah, yeah, he's already going Adam. He's named after Adam. Oh, no, 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 no. Did he even say that? Because what I heard him say was, we see this transformation of He-Man from a wimp, a Clark Kent type character. I'm like, yeah, yep, bro. No, no, uh, low rent JBL said that. Oh, he did. Okay, we need to we need yeah. to watch and and okay, all right, let's 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 watch this. Interesting. Until he's transformed and then he becomes He-Man, the most powerful man in the universe. By lifting his sword near and yelling by the power of Grayskull. Now, to understand this, we have to understand what Grayskull is. It is a castle built by unknown hands in the shape of the skull, and there's a demon spirit living within it that manifests in the shape of a skull. And so, our good character is empowered by occultic demon spirits. You're kidding. All right, I'm going to stop right there. really confident in saying that. I'm going to stop right there. Brian? Shall we go into the yep. history of He-Man? Yes. All right, please, because I think you can do it better justice than I can. Please explain what the power of Skull is and why what he said is complete bullshit. The power of Skull is the elders of Eternia. It's not demonic in any way. The spirit of Skull was basically... The um, the spirit of the elders of Grayskull, All or right. the, or spirit of the elders of Eternia. He's talking about the spirit of Grayskull, which appears in one episode. Yeah. So he's apparently watched some of He Man, but but apparently instead, of, uh, while he was chipping one off to Tila, he's just um. Oh, I don't God. know. Uh, I think they mentioned Tila later on. Uh, as well, I can't remember, but yeah, no, he got he got the history of He Man and Gray Skull completely wrong. It it's not demonic yeah. at all whatsoever. I mean, hell, Skeletor isn't even demonic. But anyway, we'll keep going. Well, I mean, he's just he, he's going off a five second clip. I mean, he's not even doing his research. He's just like you said, he's just trying to diss it. So I don't even know what the hell he's talking about. I mean, like Brian said, I think he probably did watch a little bit of the show, but he watched right. precious little. Just enough to make his little script. Not really understand. Well, yeah, he, he he picked out the things, and that's the problem with groups like this. They cherry pick. Like the thing Remember about He Man Television Council. Yes. When they in the nineties, when wrestling was huge, and they would count everything in the beginning or the intro of Raw. Yep. As a violent act. What? Yeah. Yeah, like if they showed if they showed a clip from a match where, say, Triple H body slams Stone Cold Steve Austin, that's considered a violent act. And if really? they show a replay, that's considered a separate violent act. Even they though fudge it's the same the, thing. Uh, yeah, even yeah, though it's, they yeah. fudge the information. Yeah. Holy shit! I and, did not know that. Yeah, and these people would take these television shows, anything as Brian said, anything that's popular. And they would sit down and they would scrutinize it. They, I mean, they would have their little pad of paper and their pen, and right. they'd have their check marks, you know. And they'd say "violent act," and for every one that they saw, they'd put a check mark by, or every everything gratuitous, you know, uh, any kind of thing that could be deemed as sexual, that was a separate check mark, you know. And everything, every every swear word, that was another check mark. And speaking of wrestling, we'll go into that sometime. The DX. Uh, response to that because that was hilarious but uh anyway we'll get back anything else to add before i continue no no all right here we go so all of this is coming forth and the children whether consciously or or subconsciously are picking up all these occultic overtones oh very much so you know i received this letter i thought i might read it here a lady had written to the eagle's nest and she said how harmless are the cartoon characters on the masters of the universe program for children my sister-in-law allows her son to watch this television show, and he also has all the characters, He-Man, Skeletor, who you see on the screen right now, and the Castle of Grayskull, to which this little no, I don't. old boy yeah. oh, okay. from the show. By the to say. Their editor was a little slow. They're not as good as <laughs> me. <laughs> I mean, they're all little <laughs> And she says he holds his hand up, saluted to the sky. So a two-year-old is actually learning these things. Well, the Bible says, dear oh, children... God. Let nothing take God's place in your hearts. 
Right. And He-Man is being lifted up as a god, and many children are receiving Him as such. By uh, who? I, I got a question. Yeah. And this is kind of a redundant question coming from me, because I was one of those kids that my mom understood that I knew the difference between fiction and reality. I mean, she took mm -hmm. me to see RoboCop when I was like six or seven years old in the theater. Went to go see Terminator in the theater. Went and saw Ghostbusters in the theater. Predator. Nightmare on Elm Street. Friday right. the 13th. All these movies. Poltergeist. Went and saw them all in theaters. Okay, so I may not be the best person to ask this question, but... All right. Madison, this is for you. Okay. Because you're a parent. You're a father. Okay. You got a two year you got a two year old. Are you going to uh let them watch just anything? No. Are you going to supervise them? Yes. You're gonna make sure that they understand the difference between fantasy and reality before you let Absolutely. them consume any form of media. Absolutely. I mean, they're a child. they I mean, they don't know. They have to be taught that. Thank you. So I mean that's just common sense. <laughs> I love the fact that this this is supposed to come from a three year old. Oh, two year old. And, two -year -old. Or a two year old. Pardon me, it was a two year old. Two year old. Well, <laughs> what what gets me is this woman writes in about her sister. If this is indeed a li real letter. Well, it was. It, I think it was the sister in law. I'm not trying to correct you on everything, but I just want to get the facts straight because I know where you're going with this, and, and the facts are important for your for your what you're going to say. So, two year old, and she call, uh, wrote in on behalf of her sister in law. Go ahead. Why isn't the sister-in-law writing in? Thank you. If this if this is a legitimate letter, I do question a lot of the the quote unquote facts yeah. that, are, that are presented in this in this um, documentary or or show or whatever you want to call it. Horse okay. shit, what I call it. Okay. Well, <laughs> another question here. Okay, it's been a while since Brian and I have been in high school, so we got to use our old, old, our elder brains here to think back. But when I was in school, <clears throat> and we had presentations, we had you know guest speakers come in, and they would tell stories, they would always have something to back up their story. Like, right. well, I can tell you, I can tell you right now, my wife is in graduate school. And she, when she writes a paper, she has to cite her sources. Yeah, you have to. You have to. Right. Yep. But the point that I was going to make is, like, if we have a guest speaker, you know, this is totally different than actually, like, what we're doing right now and writing a paper. I'm talking about if, if like, the three of us, you know, if this podcast got popular and for some reason we were asked to go speak somewhere, God knows why we would be asked to do that. But, you know, <laughs> anyway, uh, let's, <laughs> let's say, you know, I got a letter from somebody. Okay. And I was going to use that as part of my speech. I'm going to take the letter with me. Right. Most of the time, yeah. guest speakers take whatever they're talking about. If it's a key part of their argument, they're going to take the proof with them. Where's this proof? Where's this letter? Right. Because you, you have to have evidence to back up what you're saying. or it's Well, not, Gary, it's not to, a fact. To, be, to be completely fair, Gary is holding something in his lap. Yeah, that's the script. It I'm, could be the letter. It could be. It could be. But they're not. They're not clarifying that it is. I mean, he didn't hold it up. Yeah, he's holding a Manila folder. Yeah, I mean, okay, I'll he's even got there, some right kind there. Of Manila yeah. folder. Right there. Right I don't there. know if you can see it. I'm circling it with the mouse pointer. But yeah, he. But I guarantee fucking to you, that's the script, man. I I think that's the script. I feel like it's the script too. I don't. Yeah. I don't know if it's a script so much. I think it may be notes. I was going to say bullet points on all the bad things he wants to talk about. All right, here we go. We're going on. In fact, I was talking to one lady, and, and I've heard a number of experiences like this, but she said, my little boy was nice in the car. back seat of the car, and a radio preacher came on and said, our Lord God, the master of the universe. And her boy jumped from the back Question. What? Question. Anytime, okay. anytime any of you, because I've been to church, hell, my grandma's brothers were preachers. I have been to old-fashioned, old-school, Southern Baptist church. Okay. Mm -hmm. Oh, I have, to, I have two with the three, four-hour sermons. Yeah, I'm yes. talking hellfire and brimstone yeah. preaching. You know, you feel it when you come out of there, okay? Yeah. 
When have you ever been to a church where the preacher, the pastor, the rabbi, the priest, whatever, refers to God as the master of the universe? Never heard it. This is the first time I've ever heard it. I mean, I'm not denying that he is. He is. But doesn't it seem kind of off-key and a little convenient that he would use the slogan, the tagline of the toy line? From what they're literally talking about. Exactly. Yeah. I yeah. Mean, that just, it was a little I, too convenient. Bullshit sense tingling. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. And that's that's what I'm wanting to point out in this video. I'm not trying to point out and, and be sacrilegious. I just want to point out the hypocrisy and the convenience of the things that they're saying. Yeah. All right, here it's we go. definitely forced. Yeah, it is. It is forced. Good work. See the car and said, Mommy, God isn't master of the universe. He man is. What? A little boy said that. He-Man is the master of the universe? Oh, even more so. I've got another one. <laughs> okay, that right there just proves what I just said. The narrative is forced and it's fictional because, again, they use the tagline of the toys. He-Man and... What is it? The master of the masters of the universe. Thank you. Okay, so it's convenient that this preacher got on there and said, God is the master of the universe. Okay, you're talking about a two- or a three-year-old kid that doesn't know shit from apple butter. Right. Of course, if if this was said on the radio, if, and this is a big if, if that was said, of course the kid being that young and naive is going to say, no, He-Man's master of the universe because right. he's, that's... He's just connecting the words. That's the tagline of the fucking toys, man. Come on. Anyway, I just I, had to... Uh, I think that... I think we're, that, What's coming up next is the biggest load of horseshit that has been spewed thus far. Well, that it's it's been it's been pretty deep. I've got my waders on. Pretty soon, I'm gonna have to have my uh, my pants and everything on too to get through this. But all right, we'll continue. But so far, I mean, we're we're not even halfway through this shit. We're not even a fourth of the way through this shit. What are you thinking so far, Madison? I think it's crazy. <laughs> yeah, and we lived through this shit. Yeah, you yeah. guys had a, a lot more rough than uh, even what I had. <laughs> All right, here we go. Some more talk from Discount JBL here. My dad was talking about my presentation in a church, and a little boy was seen afterwards. I mean, I didn't even oh, do here the we presentation. Go. And afterwards, he was seen in the parking lot. Now, this is a kid growing up in a Christian home, going to church, Sunday school, the whole shot. Right. Out in the parking lot with He-Man in his hand, running around in circles saying, He-Man has... More power than Jesus. He man has more power than Jesus. So, so we can assume that millions of children that you say watch these programs are having their minds transformed from reading the Word of God or believing what the Bible says to believing what the cartoons are saying. They have that kind of influence on their mind. Right. They're taking on many gods. Go ahead, Brian. I know you got a lot to say about that. <laughs> Did, did he just say they're taking on many gods? Yes. Yeah, he's saying that they're taking on many gods, referring to That's, cartoons and toys. Yeah. Oh, I uh, yeah. Once again, where's your proof? Well, I want to know one thing. What what kid? What five year old? And I, I, I've read, not the whole Bible, but I've read the Bible. Okay. So what five-year-old is going to sit down with the King James Bible and understand even two sentences of it? You know, I mean, no kid. <laughs> what, what gets me is, he said he saw this. Right. Not only did he say he saw it, he said it happened at the church he was speaking at. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Where was it? Thank you. Yeah. Was it in Texas? He doesn't have to, was it in Vermont? Was it in the South? Was it in the North? Right. This, what this kind of church was it? Uh, not having facts to back it up. What kind of church was it? Was it Pentecostal? Was it Anglican? Was it Baptist? Was it Baptist Primitive? What kind of church was it? Exactly. There's was it Catholic? There's Obviously, probably not Catholic. Probably not. I mean, but we got, we got, it's, there's enough story here. There's enough meat on the bone to give them something to bitch about. And mm -hmm. the sad part is people our age and around our age, 
didn't buy into all this because we knew it was bullshit. But just like the news media today, the news media today is designed for two things. It's to appease young people and to scare old people. And I don't buy into either one because I'm not young and I'm not old. I'm just kind of here. Um, In between. Yeah, but and, and, and older people, older folks like my uh, my grandma didn't fall for this, thank God. But like older folks, you know, of her time, they would see this and they would be confused because they don't know shit about what they're talking about. And right. like I said on the last podcast, I was always so happy that my mom took an interest in my hobbies and things that I liked when I was a kid. You know, she knew who He Man was. She knew mm-hmm. who Spider Man was. She knew who Optimus Prime was. I mean, she she knew these characters. You know, I mean, my oh, mom, my, my mom did too. Yeah, my mom never fell for this shit. I mean, I mean my, my mom dad, was a hell of a lot smarter than that. My, my mom, dad grew up playing with He Man and stuff, so I mean, it was just him introducing the toys to me. Exactly. My mom introduced me to Spider Man. I remember the first Spider Man okay. comic and the first Spider Man figure I ever got. Secret Wars. She got for me. You know, and I'm like, yeah, okay, I like Spider Man now. All right, here we go. Many gods. Well, let's look, at a, let's look at what this is spawning in our toy stores. Each cartoon is spawning little toys that represent the cartoon. Is that correct? Right. All right, then I'm going to. No show shit, you that's how marketing works. Figure here, and he's got <laughs> this, uh, what do you call this sword here? Uh, well, that's. The it's not a sword. Oh, that's a sword. That's a cool sword. Okay, okay, all right, okay. I'm sorry, I jumped the gun. I got a little overzealous. I thought he was talking about Skeletor. I'm like, bro. I did, I did too, to be completely honest. I'm like, bro, you're you're teaching the Bible and you don't know the difference between a staff and a sword, but no, he's got he man. Their editor needs to be fired, man. Their editor yeah, he's sucks. Very slow. Holy shit. <laughs> hey, Jerry, you fucked up again. You're out. Damn it, Jerry. <laughs> My leg. As we talk about He Man, he becomes transformed. Now, from He-Man, we need to take a look at Skeletor. Okay, now this is the He-Man, a muscular figure and so forth that most Muscles are evil. Follow, I take it. Right. But the little girls have someone, too. Oh, oh they're here. cultic. We play with this toy. They're cultic. Well, let's look at Skeletor. <laughs> now, we've got him up on our screen, and Skeletor... Stock footage 101, man. Uh, ...skeletal <laughs> creature with a staff in his hand. Now, what's he's, staff hey, staff he's ripped, too, man. Hand. What the hell? Yeah. The staff is a ram's head staff. Now, the ram's head is a very occultic symbol. It's boiled in cauldrons. It's used in different occult practices. <coughs> when it's seen on the staff, it's called a norok. And when the norok is pictured in occult books, many times it's pictured with the butt of the staff crushed onto the head of a dove. Now, Skeletor introduces most of the occult within the toy series. He has the ability to mind control, to levitate, to astro project, and, and to do many other occult practices and pagan religion practices. So you're telling me little boys, for instance, could watch Skeletor with his staff of power here and they could... Man, I'm telling you, this guy... No, it's the Havoc staff. Yet, you got it wrong. What did he call it? Power. Of course, we know that the staff of power the oh. head represents Satan oh, anyway. I'm thinking of this dude so sat here and watched He Man every Saturday morning in his He Man underoos and, and got a kick out of it. Live? I mean, I could see it. Skeletor lives in Ethernia with He Man. Ethernia? Ethernia is a good world that they live in, and we'll, we'll see some things about Ethernia a little later on. Now, who lives it's Eternia, you numb nut. Why is he so saying it like that? Because they, because they don't know what they're talking about. Let's take a look at it. Now, we, we have a toy that we got at the store, which is a... Don't get turned on, no. Oh, 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 there it is, Skeleto, Master of the Universe. He's like, I, I got this out of my collection, I mean, from the store. <laughs> And it's got an interesting little feature here. Hello, you Madison's going to love this. You can actually transform your voice from uh, your regular voice to that of an occultic hero. Is that yeah. correct? So let's get a skeleton type of voice. Damn it, Jerry. <laughs> Let me turn this on here. I, I think I'm getting it too loud. Skeletor, the master of the universe. Oh wow! Give you kind of an example of, I really, uh, you really sound demonic there. You know, <laughs> sound pathetic. That of, he sounded exactly the so same. Children would 
little children would actually use that to even identify more. Damn it, you took it out of the box. Oh, it's, God, but it's not worth this much. Well, I that motherfucker. It would be interesting if we went to another video showing even more. It's not Mib anymore. Tones in these uh, different characters. So let's go to another He-Man serial right now. Okay, here we go. Another He-Man. Do, he do we have another, another serial? facing you, He-Man. Guys, give me a second. I gotta go uh, uh, to the to the bathroom. I, knew you were that. I got. I, I got to say that. Um, sorry, you know. Sorry, sorry, guys. I got it. I got it. Oh, 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 yeah. Get it out of your system, Jay. God. He man's just so hot. I mean, no. <laughs> oh Lord. I know you're talking, and you're saying things that are important, and I should probably be paying attention to you, but all I can think about is, I've got a burrito waiting for me back at the castle. <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> He's just looking at a sick pack in the mirror. Man, I tell you, they, they really are playing a long-ass clip here of a lot of exposition, <laughs> though. They, they're like, don't don't turn it off, Jerry. Don't turn it off. I'm, I'm getting into this. Damn it, Jerry! <laughs> the witch is talking. The witch. It was created with a great big explosion, or what uh, some of the scientists would call the Big Bang Theory today, which yeah. totally throws out creationism. No, it doesn't, really. The star seed is all powerful, and she mentions Skeletor and Castle Grayskull, which we'll get to a little later. But all did he say Captain Grayskull? Yes, he did. Captain Grayskull. Segment we saw, isn't that correct? That's right. Well, I want to get back to uh, exposing some of these. Right. Uh, he wants to get back to exposing the sorceress, is what he wants to get back to exposing. About the characters we're seeing on the screen right now. Well, we have a good versus evil here, battle, but the good is empowered by satanic power. This is Tila. They call her the warrior goddess or the patron saint of all warriors. You notice that she's wearing a cobra head breastplate and has a... They never called her the patron saint of all warriors. No, they didn't. ...is the symbol for demonic power and protection. And this young lady is involved in witchcraft, and you notice that she's a very voluptuous... Maybe she just likes snakes. Very <laughs> tightly clad clothes yeah. and... and uh, I, maybe, I, maybe I'm type naive, so but Brian, do you remember Tila ever yeah. casting spells? This character is called Mini no. Faces. No. Okay, thank you. Now, in a, it's in many a, faces, not many faces. faces. But he's got <laughs> many faces, all three of them. By drinking a magical <laughs> potion that Skeletor gives him. Now, he is, he is released from that. He becomes a good character. I wonder if that potion he gave him was Spoo. The demon living within him. And he don't like Spoo. Well That's right. Inside and makes him an evil character. Seriously, what's that place that they got back there behind him? I saw something moving around, but that was just Jerry outside like, mowing the yard. Yeah, Jerry. Me and Jerry are supposed to be in here changing the fucking slots. You can actually see him transform from a demon possessed. Oh, look, he pulled out another toy from his collection. Yeah. Oh, a demon possessed character. Yeah. I guess what you do with the toy, if we might try it here. Is you can turn this little deal and you can make his face change. There you go. And there Damn it, Jerry! I thought you got me a brand new one that works. And uh, then the little child can. <laughs> there's several faces, the many faces in this little toy, which change. But you know, you can become a skeleton creature, and we can go around to the different faces. No, you and can't. This, this is, I, I was waiting for it. Different. Oh, definitely. It says you can be demon possessed and No, the like, fuck you can't. Yeah, that's what, you know, if you have a demon living within you and then you're playing oh, the brother. Side, then you that's the obvious inference there. The demon so living within you. It's called Stratos. Stratos. The winged lord. He has the ability to fly and to shoot fire from his hands. You'll notice that he's a half. When did he ever shoot fire from his hands? Now, this is an inference from I don't know. I must have missed some episodes of E-Man. I think I did this too. This particular one is the sun god. <laughs> okay, now he's comparing him to hieroglyphs? What the hell? The Anunnaki. Yeah. Some of the other cartoons later on. We're getting really stargate and shit. Right. Oh, my. 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 O
cartoon series. And part of the way I do that is to look at the comic books that come with them. This is the oh, PowerPoint we're getting into thread. the mini comics now. In the PowerPoint thread, we see Skeletor in a classic lotus position of meditation, legs crossed, palms on the knees. Well, if he's in the lotus position, where the hell is he Evil Lynn? Off the ground in a yoga type position. Right. He has a oh wait, no, that was Kama Sutra. I was thinking of never mind. Crystal ball. Crystal ball is used in necromology or communication with the dead. Right. And he's talking about that this crystal ball is the only thing that will allow him to focus all of his psychic energies. That's on the first page of one comic book. I can't believe this. And so, <laughs> all kinds of occultic things happen. I can't believe it either. Comic book here. You know, we should. <laughs> we really should have put up a counter to see how many times they say occultic. I know, holy shit. You know, inside, and he starts to steal the power of Eternia. Now, Eternia. No, he doesn't. Because it doesn't fucking exist. This gargoyle. You know what they call these things? No, what? The spirits of the air. Spirit. Well, no shit. That's Ephesians six. The spirits right? of the so air. Not against flesh and blood, but against. Why do you say it? Powers, he kills me how he says things. Like. Principalities and powers, spiritual wickedness in heavenly places, the powers of the air, or the spirits of the air, the spirits of the air, and the rulers of darkness of this <laughs> world. So, actually, these cartoons are making real what Satan has had for a long time. Right. When I was Is it bad that I'm doing that? Cartoons, like Bugs what, Daffy, one hell of a He-Man uh, collection? Daffy 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 yeah. I was going to say, is it bad that I'm getting a headache? Looney Tunes, but today there's a different no. kind of cartoon that's coming I don't blame you. Sets, and the question is, is there a well-organized plot, an insidious design right now to program and influence the minds of our children towards the occult and witchcraft? Yeah, they're programming programming them to tell mommy and daddy buy me that. Yes, exactly. Kinds of demons in today's cartoons, and we don't have to yell. Which we will get into that uh, show sometime soon. God bless you. Phil comes from Texas, and Phil has been doing a tremendous. Oh, we can blame Texas for Phil. Holy shit! I must be omnipotent or something because I said Texas earlier in the podcast. Holy crap! Only steers and never mind. And he's seen that they vicariously live their lives through these cartoon characters. And I don't see any steers. Now, if we miss the generation of youth that's coming up, if we do only steers and sandy cheeks come Jesus from Texas, Christ, then we've lost Texas. The tomorrow, and the Antichrist will have them. I believe the Antichrist is trying to program the minds of our youth. And he's getting his spell, his control on their minds. And today we're going to be talking about... If that's about the case, now, in God's why didn't family, Satan take over? Important. And I wonder, Phil, if the church... These boys have lasted children. 40 years. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Well, on, well you history, know, I mean... The church has overlooked the children on many occasions. Some people in trying to... Well, you sure as hell aren't overlooking the children. Yeah, that's why you went to that toy store. Yeah. He was looking over some children, I'm sure. The children are the church of today. They're an integral part of the body of Christ today. God has placed them within... And just to be... Just to clarify, I'm not trying to be sacrilegious or anything like that. I'm really not. It's just... This is... This is ridiculous. Ridiculous. It's very ridiculous. ...as our relationship to God. And this should motivate us toward ministry to the children well now we know that tv has become a babysitter for children and when parents don't want to take uh, responsibility for children they send them to sit in front of their tv babies what a nice swipe at parents TV TV yeah exactly child's life. oh so but parents give us your money buy our tape buy our books an yeah right thousand hours of television before they graduated from high school while only spending 11,000 hours in the classroom. In 1984, the same study was done, and the figure is up to 22,000 hours on the average in front of the television set. That's 1,000 hours a year. And you know the funny thing so is? That and the, the average television watcher for... Uh, well, the average the television watching for a kid is, even ha is not even half that anymore? Yeah. And a lot of that is taken up in... Yeah, I was about to say, they correct? shit their pants oh, yes. now. Because we've noticed that the cartoons are not only just Saturday morning, but every... Most of them are watching Markiplier on YouTube. ...times of the day mm -hmm. the children can watch them. Well, a preschool-aged child will watch between 22 and 26 hours of television a week. At any time, day or night, preschoolers make up 22% of the television viewing audience. Now, when, when these children watch television, do... 
Oh, the by the way, I, I, I think it's I think right here I should mention that Phil Phillips so has a background in marketing. In yes. Yes. So let's 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 really? pause right there. Yeah. Let's go into that. Yeah, because we uh, <coughs> as I said before, we did some research on Mr. Phillips here. It was a little hard to do because he doesn't have a very big online presence. Uh, I guess the or internet's evil too. Well, that too. But yeah, he has a degree in marketing. So uh, let that sink in for a moment. Okay. I don't have a degree yeah. in marketing, but as he said earlier, is this, are, are they trying to brainwash children? Yeah, they are. They are. They're trying to brainwash them into saying, mommy, mommy, dig in your pocket, give me some money, buy me that toy. Well, I mean, it, if you want to look at it, it's it's a double standard because this video, I mean, they're trying to brainwash people Bingo. to believe that this stuff is satanic. It's a marketing strategy. Well, it's just like yeah. a marketing strategy for toys and stuff. And if you'll notice at the end of this video, they pimp out their 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 video. They oh, oh, send us money and, and buy our video cassette or you know buy our book, you know. And I think if I'm not mistaken, it's been years since we've watched this. Brian, at the end, does he not like pimp out one of his books? At the end, I'm not sure. I I know they they uh, they definitely have a commercial for the Eagles Nest Ministries uh, book or video series on I think Dungeons and Dragons, yes. and rock and roll, and which we need to. I got a I got a hold of one of the rock and roll tapes that we'll do an episode on at some point. I need to get a hold of the D and D one as well. But we'll continue Shit, on. They've here. covered everything. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah. Anything as Brian said, anything that's popular. Yeah. In fact, until a child is about the age of seven, he cannot differentiate between fantasy and reality as it deals with the television. Bullshit! Yeah, I was going to say, I call bullshit on that. TV is when you open the drapes to your living room window and sit them down and let them view their neighbors. And they see what's happening outside. In fact, I, I was watching... Okay, i got to pause again real quick. What? Madison, I'm not trying to get personal or anything, but... No, you're good. <clears throat> how old is your youngest child? Five. Five. Okay. This chuckle, uh, chuckle fuck right here just said, until the kids are the age of seven years old, they don't know the difference between fiction and reality. If you brought your five-year-old child up right now and said, hey, is... Um, are like, Paw Patrol characters real? There you go. Is Pikachu real? Well, right. You know you know your kid. I don't. What would they say? They would say, no, Pikachu is a cartoon character. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Uh, thank you. I mean, my kids knew that before they were even five. <laughs> thank you. This right here is just what these people are doing is not only are they insulting children, which Brian and I were children when this shit came out. They were not only insulting oh, yeah. us, they were insulting our parents. And I mean, like, oh, yeah, my my youngest, you know, he likes scary stuff. So he likes, you know, Chucky and shit like that. He I has a too. Chucky doll. I did. And, yeah, you told me about that. I did too when I was a kid. Yeah. I love Freddy Krueger and Jason Voorhees. Yeah, he loves that. He loves that shit, and he knows that's not real. I mean, it, it's still like he's not going to sit and watch the movie, obviously, because it's too graphic for him for a five year old. But he, I mean, he knows a little bit, like like uh, like it, like Pennywise. Like he knows in the new one, Georgie gets his arm ripped off and gets eight. And he knows that he's not watched it, but he knows, and he's like, okay, I know that's not real, but he still likes it. I mean, he knows the difference between that. He's a five-year-old. Hey, well, that, and there yeah. you go. That's you know that that was the whole point kids, I wanted to make. Kids know the difference between fiction and reality. They know right. the difference between real hair and Phil Phillips hair. I had That's to mute for a, a second. Run. No, I had to mute for a second because I actually got choked up on that one. That was good. I I, I, I laughed until I coughed <laughs> on that one. That looks like a rug. I'm telling it, you, it does. It looks actually no. If you look at the screen, everybody look at the screen. If if this is on YouTube or Daily Motion, wherever you're watching it, if you look at the screen, you know what it looks like. Mm. His hair actually looks like lacquered wood, wood flooring. Oh my <laughs> god, it really does. It looks like lacquered oh, wood shit. flooring. <laughs> <laughs> Like they carved a wig out of wood yeah, and yeah. put it on a bed. 
And I guarantee you, it, it, like like those feet, those Swedish clogs, those 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 wooden shoes that they make. A sw- now look at it. It looks like a fucking Swedish clog. Now, now anybody that's watching this now is not going to be able to look at this guy the same way, and they're going to be watching, watch and see if his hair ever moves. It oh, does. I'm telling you, no. <laughs> it's like a fucking football helmet, <laughs> like a he 1930s like American, football yeah. helmet. Holy he looks shit. like a fucking marionette. He really does. I can't get over the wood thing. I mean, that's exactly what it looks <laughs> it like. Looks like it looks like my wood flooring. <laughs> okay, all right. We'll go back to wood brain here. TV when I was about two years old and turned it on, and Lassie went running into a burning barn, and those words came on the screen that we've all come to hate to be continued. Oh yeah, yeah. And uh, and I was I was crying and very upset by this. Oh and man, don't bring Lassie into this. So that's not real. Lassie was a boy. Fantasy, but yeah. that didn't help because I believed it was real. I could not comprehend. And a girl. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so he finally <laughs> faked a phone call. Depending on which dog they use. Sure yeah, because l- nine times out of ten, the Lassie dog actually was a boy. That's funny. I, I, I remember that now. That's funny. <laughs> Phil, is that the children cannot differentiate between that being a cartoon and fantasy. They think it actually represents a form of reality. That's yeah. bullshit. No I must have been the smartest well, motherfucker be ever because I can tell the difference between a fucking drawing and a real person. Holy shit, that's total bullshit. Can't like going, is it tomorrow yet? Right. It's beyond their capabilities to understand time. So, being the children, <laughs> no, what? what? Okay, okay, okay. All right, I'm sorry. I gotta be an intellectual asshole no, for a not. minute. Okay, he's saying children don't know what time is. Now, if we were getting quantum here, if we were going into quantum physics and space time continuums, you know, and, and, and the uh, uh, the fucking, um, I, I don't know. I mean, you're like. Fucking string theory and shit. That's what I was trying to think of. We were talking about string theory and folding the universe on top of each other to make fucking wormholes and shit. I would agree. Yeah. Kids don't know what the fuck that shit is. But we're talking about time. What the fuck that shit is. They don't know. You know, they they know. Oh, it's four o'clock. It's time for He-Man. That's (laughs) what I'm saying. They know to get on there to watch the show. What the fuck? Oh, these yeah, like, like they're sitting, like they're sitting in their classroom at school, going, I don't know what time it is." It's Jerry, time, Jerry, it's time for your juice, Jerry. Change the page. We yeah, want to see Jerry Skeleton. Doesn't, Jerry doesn't know time because he doesn't know how to change the fucking slide. Thanks, that's what I'm saying. He can't tell time, so he's just like, nah, just, uh, I like Skeleton. He's cool. <laughs> he's so cool. <laughs> He's all bony. Oh. We're having way too much fun with this. God almighty. All right. Oh, here. By, by, the, by the way, um, before you start it back up, I just want to throw out a fact. Okay. Skeletor isn't a demon. He's an alien. Yeah. No. According to wooden haired guy here, he's a fucking demon. Okay. Get the facts right, man. Come on. From, from now, henceforth, Fucking Phil Phillips is known as Cloghead, okay? He's a Clog new He Man villain. His name is Cloghead. Holy <laughs> shit. He uses the power of his clog hair. Uh, <laughs> if you get cold, you can just start a fire, rub what, his head. When he goes to his barber, his barber just pulls out some fucking sandpaper and just reshapes. <laughs> nah, he just. Yeah, some, some fucking sandpaper. <laughs> Well, here comes Cloghead. I better get the lathe out. <laughs> How do they view a commercial? Well, they view commercials as public service announcements, as though it's a real. Oh, bullshit! Oh, yeah. I'm yeah, sorry, I got. Bullshit! <laughs> they view commercials as public service announcements. This is a public service announcement. Buy our toys, fucking damn it! <laughs> I just I'm sorry. I just can't see I can't see a six year old or a five year old sitting in front of the TV going, Oh shit. Kellator's taking over the Castle Gray Skull. We better go and buy this because it's going to happen. Oh shit. <laughs> he man can't fight him all by himself, so I better get man at arms. <laughs> this guy, this oh guy my has god. Turned. 
<laughs> the more he talks, he has diarrhea of the mouth and constipation of the brain. Oh, and it's catching. All right. So I think what we have to do right now is show a commercial or two. Oh God, here we go! A public go. service go. announcement. Another, uh, yeah, here we go. Public, public service announcement. Right now. Commercial. But well, he he just said it wasn't a commercial. Jerry didn't know how to spell public service announcement. <laughs> <laughs> uh, how do you spell that? Pubic. This is really happening. <laughs> yeah, this see commercials. This is this is, this isn't made up like in a uh, fucking studio somewhere. These are ancient tomes from the demons and aliens from millions of years ago. This is factual. And now we're going to fu fucking attack Cookie what is, Crisp. What does cereal have to do with what they were just talking about? Oh, they'll get into that. He-Man was the first... The, the He-Man cartoon was the first cartoon that was allowed under FCC rules when they relaxed the rules that a TV show could not be based on a toy. Hmm. Now, uh, Madison, do you even remember Cookie Crisp? The children watch these uh, and not that they one. By what they, they got a new one oh, with yeah. the wolf on it, right? Children, uh, oh, I forgot yeah. about that Saturday one. Saturday morning, they they become glued to the television <laughs> set. In fact, in fact, television you want to know why kids were glued to the television set on Saturday mornings? <laughs> because it was the only time that we had to watch <laughs> cartoons. The rest of our pitiful existence was in school, listening to his old school marms. Don't talk. So, so, See, I did. Now, I didn't grow up with uh, cartoons on Saturday morning. I had cartoons every morning. So, not us. <laughs> this cyclone character that's just come out. What I'm trying to show through these commercials is that is that when a child watches these about 30 times during a Saturday, he is programmed by the 30 times. To be I was going to say, Brian, do you remember them advertising He-Man 30, 30 times on a Saturday? I mean, does a no. kid have that long of attention span to watch a commercial 30 times? Well, that kid's going to bounce off the wall. That's I mean, him that much attention to a commercial. Commercials used to be cool, bro. Commercials today suck. Yeah, they did. They did. Commercial for children during the Super Bowl or during six o'clock news. They don't care if you ever see it because they create an advocate within your home. Now, if they can do that with thirty-second commercials, think what they can do with thirty-minute cartoons. Okay, now cartoons aren't thirty minutes; they're twenty-two yeah. minutes. But whatever. thirty-minute cartoons. Rainbow Bright. Does this tie with any uh, toy? Would he pull that cereal box oh, yeah. out of his ass? To yeah. A lot of the cereals to link with toys. You know, I'm honestly I'm surprised they don't talk about the rainbow. The well, this is before the whole gay rainbow product. thing. Yeah. GI Joe, and we know that a lot of his characters are out. Uh oh, right Brian. And, and <laughs> the GI Joe characters are getting occultic too, aren't they? Oh yeah. And that cereal box is cool as shit, more. dude. We'll show some of their characters a little later to show you just how occultic GI Joe is going. I think what we'd like to ask right I don't now, remember G.I. Joe cereal. There any kind of, yeah, uh, we had cereal for everything. <laughs> That's awesome. I, I just love, I love how everything <laughs> is occulting. Is she -Ra, and there's another one she -Ra. That, <laughs> No, it that fucking is isn't. That is for <laughs> it's she -Ra, not she -Ra. Girls. Now, girls watch the other cartoons, too. All right, bro. Holy shit, they found... Hey, hey, found Golden Girls. I was getting ready to say... Holy shit. I was getting ready to say, who other than us... Fucking remembers Golden <laughs> Girls. I've heard the name. No, we ain't talking it about the sitcom. We're not talking about oh. the sitcom with B. Arthur. <laughs> no, it was, no it was. They were basically like She-Ra figures. They were dolls, basically fantasy. And they're yeah, fantasy characters. And they had diecast accessories. That was the cool part. Oh shit! I'll just quote one yeah. of my heroes, Judd Nelson. B. Arthur. Outstanding. Outstanding. All right, <laughs> <laughs> uh, here we go. The thing I'd like to do is tie all this information up that we've given people. You see, all this stuff links together because when a child watches the cartoon, they no longer, as we said in the first show, project themselves with their imagination into the toy and give it life, character, abilities, and talents and set the surrounding around it. They've been programmed by the cartoon to play with the toy in a certain manner. Uh huh. And and so if the cartoons. I'm sorry, I got to stop again. Uh huh. What do we call this in the modern age? 
play believe, patterns. I believe we call it a contradiction. Yeah. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Let's see what else that we can catch him on. Says that a character has occult powers. Then when the child plays with a toy, he is going to use that toy to cast spells or do whatever the toy oh, does Jesus. in the cartoon. And so he's programmed to play with the toy in a certain manner. Well, let's let's take a toy for instance. Then he'll take uh, the little He-Man, and he'll begin to yell those words by the power of Grace Grayskull. And he'll begin to throw spells on people by his own imagination. No, he fucking won't! He's throwing spells on people through the toy? What the hell? He man doesn't use spells! What the hell? And they play with, like, Skeletor, and they levitate him, and, and then when they don't have... I don't remember Skeletor ever flying, do you? I don't remember that either. No. And they imagine themselves with these occult powers. I got you. Now let's go on now and show what the girls did he, are. Didn't he ride on something? Didn't Skeletor ride on something? Something. Yeah. 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 yeah, it's, it's been a while since I watched the cartoon, but I, I do remember him riding. We had uh, what was it called? The Sky Sled? Uh, yeah. Yeah. North Sled. <laughs> Why are you getting so close? She wants me. <laughs> I don't feel so fresh. <laughs> they mispronounced her name. What did That's they say? True. Oh, her name is they she -Ra. She -Ra. Not she Ra. <laughs> <laughs> no, see, but they're trying to tie it into the sun god Ra. They're trying to say that she Ra, you know, I, uh, that's right. the whole point. Oh, I can't wait till he'll have a fuck up Etheria. <laughs> Etheria. Well, there we saw She-Ra uh, with the same kind of, she said, by the power of Grayskull. No, she and didn't. Phil, as I'm watching this, I'm she said for the honor of Grayskull, you numb nut. As I said before, not ten seconds ago they watched this clip and they couldn't even take notes. Jerry, you're fired. What? In no. some cases, <laughs> even more occultic. What we're about to show in this next clip is is a okay we're moving to the next clip now competition on throwing and casting spots. i want to know what that figure and is I on the tv right now interesting for the people to see now it and looks lifeless right oh wait no never mind. For this. this was just the first thing we recorded yeah everything's okay. been recorded let's watch the competition first thing that they happen to record she rock bullshit they didn't pick this out this is just the, just happened to be on tv first first thing that just came on yeah You know, I've noticed something about the clips they're using. They pick a lot of exposition. It, yeah, that's what I was saying earlier. I mean, we got a 30-second clip there of the sorcerers just going on about exposition for the whole episode. Mm -hmm. Okay, and this chick farts and knocks everybody out. <laughs> well, she really sounded like she was having an orgasm there for a second. Thanks. She's like, oh... Oh, what? Shadow Weaver! Oh, okay. no. She's a cultic. Cultic. I got a Shadow Weaver figure sitting across from me here. Better watch it. It'll come to life and, like, brainwash you and stuff. A fart on you. I hope so. <laughs> I really do. <laughs> See, that whirlwind is, is evil. You know how you can tell? Because it's purple. Yep. I, oh, I thought that was Phil Jerry. talking for a second. No, I don't know Cut the clip, Jerry. Watching today, but I'm absolutely shocked at what's being So am I. This is bullshit. Through these cartoons, we've just watched a uh, mystical world uh, called Mystical or something like that, and got to refer to his notes. I can't remember what he's talking about. And this girl, Shira, who is a myth mythical like a. Uh, a goddess to the children. 
She's got a bullshit spells and incantations that are being thrown. And I mean, what are the implications of all this, Phil? Well, it's direct link to the occult and, and pagan religion. <laughs> I'm serious. We should have. I need to edit this and put it in a cult counter. Dimension. We should have been overrun with witchcraft. Which, I mean, which is, if this is true. It's based from Hinduism uh, and, and other religions like that has been added into our toys and cartoons these days. No. You talk about Hinduism. Would we see anything like the martial arts or, uh, you know, yoga exercises? Well, we did see yoga exercises. Yes, because year. martial arts and, and yoga is evil, too. Position. Uh, yeah. <laughs> let's go on to Thundercats for a moment. Oh, boy, here we go. Do with the martial arts in the Thundercats series. Yes, they, they are involved in the martial arts. They're all martial the arts. Half men, half line. Again, the beast man combination, much like many of the guys. They're all, you caught that, didn't you? All half man, half lion. Well, Tiger is yeah. fucked. Half men, half lion. <laughs> <laughs> and communicate with the dead and, and, and so is Chitara because she's neither a man nor a lion. Let's go and look what at the, the hell? Cats right now who we saw are taken from heathen gods of the past, ancient heathen gods. Here's Thundercats. You know, I'm surprised they didn't talk about the first episode being called Genesis or Exodus and uh, them all being naked. Man, they didn't watch it. Didn't even know that. See, they, they called for prostitutes. <laughs> you didn't count on my loyal army of prostitutes, did you? <laughs> Man, they just don't make cartoons like this anymore. I mean, damn, dude, this is bringing no. back to when I was little. Holy shit. Yeah, I'm enjoying watching the cartoon and not just dreading it when this right. asshole is going to start speaking again. <laughs> Those evil acrobatics there. Yeah, that yoga, that evil yoga. we've been observing here there were gymnastics and martial arts what did i say oh my god and jumping here you called that shit cats. and again jumping jumping, jumping. Don't, don't you ever jump madison pagan symbolism oh nope. that's pagan that's symbolism you're jumping called the sword uh it has the eye of it's cultism Thundera. do you can you tell me anything about what the eye of Thundera is the the sword of omens that lino the the hero of this cartoon carries is the object of the whole thing trying to control this sword now it's called the sword of omens and there is an eye in the center called the eye of thundera it's a red eye mm -hmm. and when placed to the forehead it's visy. it enables you to see into the future to tell if there's danger around now this third eye is mm. directly from the third eye of hinduism and when you travel through india you notice that that third eye is almost always red absolutely and so we're seeing again an occult practice and the children begin to pick up all right idea. sorry i gotta pause again did thank I, you did i hear this correctly he's calling other religions occultic and evil yeah that's what yes. yeah, i'm taking from it so well, martial martial arts and yoga are considered eastern eastern e pagan religions from the east so any of our eastern listeners indian you know uh, any any anybody that practices another religion you're all heathens you know buddhist or yeah. yeah i mean <laughs> that, yeah this is, <laughs> this this is i forget the term but basically it's my religion is better than your religion yes that's called elitism yes and you know yeah. the, the bible speaks about against being you know acting holier than thou that that's, yeah you're not supposed to do that thank you yeah the bible should also speak out about gary's open collar shirt <laughs> no one wants to see that bro the 70s called they want their style back amen as part of everyday life and that they should look for things in their own lifestyles that would identify with Hinduism, the occult, and mystical Eastern religion. Creating a desire for the occult again. 
I'm absolutely. I just I, I can't wrap my head around any other religion is occultic. I just I, I just. I'd like to play another video. That's a goat sore like a spit in the face of them. Who are half man and half beast that we saw earlier. We saw the martial arts segment, but let's show how occultic they really can become as oh, we look please. at how they get into even talking occultic. to the dead. Here's Thundercats again. I bet Gary's getting a brick because Mumra's a mummy. <coughs> that voice probably scared the shit out of him. Yeah, probably. Oh, astral projection. Oh, I can just see Gary twitching already. It sleeps, Jaga, and I cannot awaken it. Your young friend talks to himself. Jaga! Sealed or not, the eye sleeps only until needed. No, don't leave us, Jaga. The eye sleeps. I got shit to do. In the nether realm, I gotta teach the occult to all these people. <laughs> Oh, that sword's so badass. I had the roleplay toy of that when I was a kid. You'd push a button on the hilt and it would light up and everything was cool. Holy shit, that's awesome. They make metal replicas. Yeah, but they don't... I think I had, I think I had a repli replica sword when I was uh, younger. The, the metal ones that they make now, they don't look the same, though. They, they don't... They look like knockoffs, which, I mean, they are knockoffs, but... Holy shit! Let's go. Holy shit, man! Build the magic. Oh, here we go. Let's see what Chuckle Fucks have to say. If you're seeing what I'm seeing. <laughs> we're seeing this sort of omens that uh, this Lion-O is using here. Lion-O? Again, it's absolutely what? occultic, even to something that was taken like out of Star Wars. It looks like he's damn it, Gary. Uh, like Obi Wan Kenobi, uh, little Luke Skywalker talked to him here. We find Lionel talking to his dead father, Jaga. Is that his no. name? No. Yeah. Jaga. Jaga was not his father. When they talk to the dead, uh, it's called necromology, and it's dealt with in Deuteronomy on a number of occasions. That this is something we're not even supposed to have in our home. It's an abomination to God for us to speak to spirits of the dead or dead relatives, which are really only demons masquerading as. That dead chair is an abomination Whoa! to me. Whoa! 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 Did you all, wait? Did you all hear that? Yes, I did. Well, tell me what you heard. It. Okay, tell me what you heard, because I'll tell you what I heard. Go ahead. It, it's, he's talking about people are speaking to dead people. I mean, are kids speaking to dead people? <laughs> That's not what I heard. Let me rewind what? it a little bit and, and play that again, because you all got to hear this. Okay, I'll stop making fun of the chair. All right, here we go. Let's see. Let me, let me find. Uh, so hopefully I can find it. Which are really only demons masquerading. Nope, as I went too here, far. We find Lionel talking to his dead father, here we go. Jaga. Is that his mm -hmm. name? Yeah. Jaga. Phil, what is this called when they talk to the dead? Uh, it's called necromology. And Pay it's attention. dealt with in Deuteronomy on a number of occasions. That this is something we're not even supposed to have in our home. It's an abomination to God for us to speak to spirits of the dead or dead relatives, which are really only demons masquerading as dead ones. Right. What do y'all think of that? I don't know. So, according to them, anyone dead is a demon? Am I catching that right? Oh, or is he okay. saying that demons are trying to trick us and talk to us? Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I think I, I hate to play the the uh, devil's advocate with these two assholes, but I think that's what he was trying to say. Okay, so I, I misunderstood. At first, I thought he meant anyone that dies is a demon, but no. Apparently, he's saying that when you like use a Ouija board to try to talk to somebody, it's actually a demon talking to you, pretending to be your family. Okay, all right. He's not. Okay. He's not being very specific about that. Well, they're so they're I not mean, being like, thorough. That's why I keep right, getting confused. I mean, if if somebody wasn't really paying attention, the way it take you would take that is if you went to like one of your relatives' grave 
and you were like, you know, giving them flowers and then kind of like saying something towards them, that's an abomination to God. I mean, that's what I took from it. That's and that's what I was taking from it. That's why I wanted to rewind it there because, as you said, I mean, I mean, I was paying attention, but I'm also focused on, you know, holy crap, we're sitting here watching this shit. But <laughs> I mean, I, I honestly feel like I'm getting dumber by the second. I really do. Yeah, absolutely. All right, here we go. And we're only and halfway he through. Forth his sword, you know, and he summons it forth, and and it levitates to his hand. Yeah, I couldn't believe some of the absolutely bizarre creatures there. The one was called Mumra, is that correct? Yes. Now, let, we have a culty toy here that we bought in the store, which is this Mumra? Well, the, it, it is part of Mumra. Mumra changes from a mummy that you saw on the screen to this figure right here. And Ra, again, is the, is the sun god Ra. Uh, and you. this is called the ever living evil one. No, the it's not. The ever living evil one. Yeah. It's interesting. If I push the back of this doll, where are they getting the these facts from? <laughs> I mean, where is where is statistics the from? The I mean, there's nothing to back up, back up what real, he's saying. Jerry, you're not doing a good job. <laughs> of what's on the cartoon, and the children might play with this. No, no. Stuff. What they're doing is they're taking things that they hear on the show, and they're cobras, and they're getting it all confused. Like when Mumra transforms, he'll say. Totally by the uh, let's see what was it that he would say um, wiped out by what was um, here so i don't remember fuck sort of what was it um, all of these things uh, by the ancient the spirits of evil transform this uh, decayed in a, in a form the into mumra the ever living would be it was something along those lines who are watching today well, i think probably the greatest scripture they're just they're skipping around too much second corinthians 11 verse 3 it talks about Eve being deceived by the serpent's cunning or trickery or plans. And she was deceived in her mind. She was not deceived. You know, I'll, I'll say this. They're talking about snakes. Mind. They're talking about and snakes in He Man and now in Thundercats. Sometimes a duck a is just a duck. From a pure and That's what I'm saying. Devotion to Christ or God. Now, our children don't have to wind up in the backyard sacrificing chickens to a moon god to be affected by the occult within the toys and cartoons. And you say some have even yelled out in parking lots, He-Man is more powerful than Jesus Christ. Right. Oh, we're bringing that back All up now. All that has to happen yeah. is the, uh, for Satan to divert them from a pure and sincere relationship to God, and he's won. Yes. He doesn't have to get them totally involved in the occult, although that can happen, and this creates a desire and a taste for it. Well, let's tie this up today. I know some of you parents that are watching are already saying, I can't Pay attention, it. Madison. I let my children watch this on Saturday morning and on the weekdays, and they're totally involved with these characters. They act like them. I tell you what, you have a responsibility as a parent to stop the children from having these toys, from watching these cartoons, and with Yeah, Madison, no more Pokemans. For that child. In oh man, I gotta. Jesus, I break every stronghold. I gotta, I gotta do this for my kids in the name of Jesus. And I praise God. No, nobody out there has fun. Time. No. Yeah. Quit having fun. Can't but have fun. Fuck, thanks fuck to, having an imagination. Fuck having imagination thanks. at all. Did Jerry have to switch the tape over? <laughs> thanks for the warning. We'll see you again. Oh, oh shit. Jerry. Oh, we're on part two now. What was part two? I don't remember part two. More bullshit, that's what it was. Yeah. Hello, oh, he's wearing a different outfit. Though. I was going to say, did Gary change clothes? My special guest from Texas. <laughs> Still got that deep v-neck. That shows me how dedicated these guys are, man. They couldn't even get through their own episode all in one sitting, and here we are doing it. Yeah, what the hell? And the occult. And I asked Phil earlier how we got into this area, and he said that way back in the days of Kenny You know what Gary Martin looks like to me? Next time it closes in on his face, imagine a Bee Gees album, and he's just on the cover of it with a big like, gold pendant around his neck. <laughs> I can see that. It almost looks like half his mustache is going to fall off. All right, Ken and Barbie. Well, obviously... Looking at the I totally didn't get these out of my collection. American dream type people. You know, Barbie is absolutely perfect. Perfect body, perfect hair, perfect clothes. Perfect, perfect body. Perfect yeah. Body. We know what you're right. Yeah, sounds like he plays with his Barbie quite a bit. Image, 
you know, that she has Harvey's hot, man. Dude, his hair looks, looks more like wood but now than it did before. About them, and it, and it just flows right <laughs> He's saying it a little bit off of it between the takes. It doesn't move. Absolutely no blemishes. It's wood, man. You called that. It's, it's wood. He has an overbite, too. He looks like a beaver. He is. He's one of the angry beavers. I think what kills me is how much he has to lean forward to make a point. That gives him power. Yeah. Because, you know, he's the dominant one. Gary's just kind of leaning back. Gary's kind of chill, man. He's just like, see, look at him. He's, he's holding the dolls. You know, for for Philip, yeah. you know. Is that right? Yes. And yeah. you mean the the children were actually getting involved? Uh, little girls would see Barbie being so perfect, so slender, and their reaction would be, "I've got to be like her." So they'd start starving themselves. Yes. This man said that that this yeah, because little kids think that much into that shit. Yeah. And little girls. And he has okay. Never given All right. Here's girls. again. I hate to pause and take up more of our time, but I got a question. How many little girls, I mean, little girls, they start playing with Barbie at what? Five, six years old, four or five, somewhere around there. Okay. I, so, I did. When I was like, well, I did, so. I did too, but I mean, I mean, no. Um, okay. My question is the way they're talking about it. And this has always bothered me about Barbie. And not, it's not Barbie, but people that, you know, like claim to be collectors or enthusiasts or speak out against Barbie. They always want to label Barbie as a sex icon, like a sex idol or some shit. Okay, yeah. what little girl, and God, I feel dirty just even asking this question, but what little girl at five or six or seven, eight, nine, ten years old is sitting here thinking, I've got to look sexy for my man. I got, I got to put my thong on i gotta wax my legs i gotta i gotta work on my glutes so i got a firm butt so when my man comes over we can get it on god i feel nasty no, no, no. that's just i mean that, that doesn't no. happen i mean i've i've, I've had this come i've had this conversation before it's it goes to like uh like sex and stuff like little kids don't understand how that works so no. they're, they're not going to think that way you know what i'm saying that their minds don't think that way uh because they're not old enough if, to understand that shit if that was the case then why aren't more boys anorexic trying to be like he-man yeah right right you know, i mean if, if that was the case i mean we would have been pumping iron at the age of five years old and we would be jacked as fuck right now, man. I mean, or I'd be trying to fold my body into contortionary positions and turn into a truck or something. I mean, you just, you just think that shit's cool and you want to, you know, play with the toys when you're young. You're not thinking of the details like an oh, adult sure. and you're a fucking kid. I'm sure Phil wants to play with the Barbie. Well, I'm, yeah. well <laughs> I'm going to bring something up, and, and I want to see if you all think I'm close to hitting the, the, the mark on this one. Okay, so I don't know, but we'll say these two chuckle fucks have kids. We'll give them the benefit of the doubt. Okay, by what they're saying in this episode, in this, this movie, this presentation, can you imagine how they treat their children? They would not be allowed to watch anything on TV. They wouldn't oh, be allowed God. to have cereal. They wouldn't be allowed to... I mean, okay, all right, now think about this. So they have warped their minds to where when they do see something like He-Man or Barbie or G.I. Joe or something like that, maybe, just maybe, they do have thoughts like that because they are so fucking repressed. Yeah. And do you think well, maybe... Also, Maybe that's where a lot of this this bullshit's coming from. You can't you can't I, shelter your kids from shit like that, man. Like you can't you can't be that strict with stuff. That you I, just, I can tell you from experience, it puts fear of the eye of the the thing into the kid. Right, well, right. story time. I was going to save the, I was going to save this for later, but uh, Brian and I can both tell stories. I'm going to tell a short one. When I was seven years old. My parents have been divorced pretty much all my life. They got divorced when I was like two years old. So I would go to my dad's house on Wednesdays and every other weekend. When I was seven years old, my dad had to sit down with me in his truck and tell me, you can't bring your Transformers toys to my house anymore. You know, and I'm like, why? 
Well, his wife was one of these people. You know, oh. she Christmas was evil. Halloween was evil. Right? Easter was evil. Uh, television was evil. They didn't have television. And because I was, you had a you had a uh, an icon, right? Like Santa Claus, or Easter right, Bunny. right, right. The Easter Bunny, Christmas trees, and you know, gift giving. And I'm sitting here at seven years old saying, "You know where we got gift giving? That's from the three wise men bringing gifts to baby Jesus right. on his birth. That's where the whole thing comes from." But no, he told me that I couldn't bring Transformers to his house anymore because they were an abomination of God. And I'm sitting here, I'm like, "No, you don't believe that. This is just what she's telling you." Um, and so I couldn't take Transformers to my house or to my dad's house anymore because she believed that because they were robots, they were they were created by man, they were demons, and I was not allowed to have them out there. What a way to destroy a seven year old's imagination. Exactly. That's yeah. that's insane. I mean, kids kids shouldn't have to worry about shit like that. You know, you should be able to go out, buy some toys and play with them if you want to. Well, that's like Brian ought oh, to tell you the story did. about the uh, woman that called his mom. You ought to tell that story. Oh yeah, <laughs> called my mom and told her that she was gonna rot. That was gonna rot in hell because I play because I played with E Man and GI Joes and Star How old Wars. Seven. <laughs> Holy shit, man! That's horrible. Got, got in my face and told me the same thing. My mom told her to mind her oh, own yeah. damn business. That's ridiculous. But see, and that's that's, that's the whole reason we wanted to do this one is because a lot of collectors, I'm not saying all collectors, but a lot of collectors are younger than us. And, right. you know, they have the benefit of the internet. They have the benefit of, you know, people helping them collect, you know. Oh, yeah. It's a way different ball game right. now. Than, I mean, even when I was younger, like in the early 2000s. Right. It, but this stuff doesn't exist that much. I mean, they try to bring it back every year, mm -hmm. but this is the some of the hardships that we had to go through, man. Well, it's just it's there just was... because you guys were exposed to it at a young age, so everybody that was growing up that you're all's age knows that this is bullshit. So that's why it wasn't able to come back and, and you know affect my generation or the next generation. It's um. It was bad in the 80s because there, there was the whole idea that there was a satanic movement. There were child, like daycares that were shut down and the people were arrested and prosecuted because they said they were uh, uh, satanically abusing children. Holy shit. And rituals. And all these kids had, had repressed memories and stuff. And come to find out, a lot of these kids, most of these kids... As a matter of fact, weren't remembering actual facts. It was all bullshit. Yeah, because kids are their, their minds are subjective. If you plant, if you're if you're a manipulator, you can plant. Why do you think we have uh, so many instances of like people on TikTok or Twitter or YouTube, and they're uh, like brainwashing these kids into? doing things that they really got no business fucking doing these I'll, I'll just say it i'm not afraid of youtube they're pedophiles man they're 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 grooming these kids to be play a part in all this shit the, and, because they're manipulators you can manipulate a child into believing just about anything that you want to now i'm not trying to be contradictory here and going back on my own statement of saying well kids know the difference between reality and fiction this is totally different this is this is the difference between watching a TV show and saying, yeah, that's fiction. That's not real. That's cartoon. Those are drawings. And an adult coming to the child and grooming them into believing something is real. And I'm not saying that that's what these people are doing, but it just it seems odd to me that all of the shit that they're talking about, I I I don't remember kids acting this way in the 80s. I don't. I don't remember oh. kids running around saying Jesus is more powerful than, or uh, He Man's more powerful than Jesus. And I don't. I, I don't remember any of that ever happening. Well, kids don't think that into depth of things. No, they don't. <laughs> well, I'll tell you this: if uh, if you watch a lot of um, true crime shows, yeah, they'll. If you watch enough of them, you'll see. They'll say that the the one thing that you can't trust is an eyewitness. 
That's true. To a to a point, you they're good, but memory is fallible. Well, like yeah, I said, it's, it's subjective. Your mind's only going to piece piece together, you know, certain things, and you're not going to remember exactly how something, you know. Hell, I can't out. remember why I went to the kitchen half the time. Well, it's like a few weeks ago, uh, this guy came up to my car. I was on the phone with Brian, and he tried to get me to fight him. I mean, he was drunk. He he pitched a fit. Yeah, and I couldn't tell you to this day, like if the cops came to me and asked me to give, I could give a vague description of him, but I couldn't tell you what kind of vehicle he was driving, and he pulled right in front right. of me. He blocked my vehicle so I couldn't get away from him. I mean, I couldn't tell you what kind of vehicle he drove. I just, oh, it was uh, some kind of small SUV or, or a pickup truck with a uh, camper on the back of it. That's all I could tell you. And I think it was like dark blue or black. So you're, I, just, you're just in the moment of like, what the fuck is going on? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So yeah, all right, we'll get back to uh, we still got a little bit longer uh, on this. I mean, we we may not go through the whole sh- uh, shit and caboodle because uh, I mean, there's some of the stuff that's just not interesting. I mean, we've we've hit the high points for the most part, but we'll continue right. on. All to any of his granddaughters. That's how much he believes in this. Yes. And Do you all want to skip the Barbie stuff? Because I mean, we've already talked about Barbie. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, right. right. the, the Barbie stuff isn't as interesting. So with those no. little. Uh, pieces in the game that we even had uh, paper, newspaper clippings of children that had dropped out. Some uh, they thought had even committed suicide because of the game. Okay, and here we're talking about Dungeons and Dragons. Dragons and we'll go back. With conditions him okay. to vicariously live his life through that doll. And what was that statement you made earlier that God spoke to you and said what dolls would do? Well, children project themselves with their imagination into toys to give them life, care. Oh, wait, are they still talking about Barbie? And they set the surrounding around it. You see, toys are symbols. Let's go into the more blatantly occultic thing. Here we yes. go. I remember a couple of years ago, I preached a message for television called Dungeons and Dragons. Here and we go. in it, I dealt with the occultic overtones, the witchcraft, the demonism, the spells. Uh, are we picking up on something here yet that the only words that they know is occultic? I, Felt at the mm-hmm. that children were identifying so closely. Yeah, he really so loves using that word. Uh, pieces in the game that we even had uh, paper, newspaper clippings of children that had dropped out. Some uh, they thought had even committed suicide because of the game. Yeah. And even more has come to light since then. And where's these, uh, show a where's these newspaper clippings? Right yeah, I want facts because it didn't happen. Overtones of the game. So here's from the cartoon show that's now come from the game. Here it is, Dungeons and Dragons. Oh, I forgot yeah, that I they brought the cartoon. Car- yeah, I forgot they brought the cartoon into this. Excellent. Soon the repairs will be completed, and your work will be done now for your It reminds me, I need to get the rest of those figures. Well, what is it? The lost children. Sorry, Phil and Gary. <laughs> <laughs> well, they're going to convince you to do evil uh, Buddhist things, yeah. like acrobats and jumping. And jumping. <laughs> God, they would have a shit fit over fucking uh, parkour. Yeah, holy shit, yeah. You know what, what gets me about this? Oh, hang on. Well, Phil, we've been watching a, a, a character here called Venger and another black creature called Shadow Keeper. What That's would you represent to you? Oh, yeah, it is. I was about to say that. depiction of Satan and his demon uh, powers and demon friends. Uh, uh, they go forth for him. Uh, I believe that Dungeons and Dragons is a direct uh, quote from the pit of hell, if you want to call it that. Uh, it is a mind-bending game, a mind-changing game. It I sent some marketing scare theme. The well, you know, Gary just got through saying that he wrote a book or, or preached a message, or I think he said he wrote a book against Dungeons and Dragons. So yeah, marketing. There you go. And it's full of hey, I've got that book. And actually, those I love how they children can they don't want to really pur- purchase this and shit, but they would really have all of it. Aren't they? Yes, very much so. Now let's look at another one of these. This is where we go into the Dungeon Master's Guide. Who is the Dungeon Master? 
Well, the dungeon master is a person who plays the dungeon master is the game. sexy one, and, uh, and he he's the one that disciplines me. I always wore sorry, wrong man. I always wore a thong. I mean, no. And, uh, oh and my god! Controls the situations in the game, controls the way the players are moving through the dungeons, and no. then, uh, then if he doesn't like someone, he can play pretty much against them. Do you think parents are aware that when the children play the game, that demon spirits are involved? I do not think that many parents are aware of what's inside the game. In fact, in my I don't think you're aware of what's inside, inside the game. This is uh, just fucking images of this 30 game. years of experience DMing Dungeons and Dragons game. talking here. I don't think that they've ever so cracked those books when, open. Uh, I did my message, and this has happened. I have letter after letter where people. Of course he did. Of course he didn't open it because that's from his personal collection. He don't want to open it. You don't want to damage that spawn. Yeah. The incinerator or the fireplace and screams would come out. Bullshit! 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 Did you hear that? Yes. Madison, did you hear that, or do I need to go back? Yeah, go go back. I didn't get that. Okay. All right. You know. Okay. All right. Advanced Dungeons and Dragons, the Monster Manual. And he talks about the fire. The Monster Manual. Children can imagine, and yeah. children's imaginations are very active, aren't they? Yes, very much so. Now let's look at another one of these. This is where we go into the Dungeon Master. Uh, guide. Back too far. Who is the Dungeon Master? Now let's look at another one of these. Then, uh, then if he doesn't like someone, he can play. Uh, this is closer against. to where it was. Do you think parents are aware that when the children play the game, that demon spirits are involved? Hang on. I do not think that many parents are aware of what's inside the game. In fact, in my presentation, I show many pictures from the inside of the books. Just my to presentation. show the images Hang of this on. game. I yes. mean, the gruesomeness of this game and the occult link to it. Well, I know that when uh, I did my message, and this has happened, I have letter after letter where people took the pieces. Now, there's sixes involved in the pieces of the game, but they yes. take the pieces of the game, they would throw them in the incinerator or the fireplace, and screams would come out because there seemed what? to be some kind of spiritual forces inhabiting those pieces and children. Okay. There are, the no, there are numerous things wrong with his uh, testimony there. I'm going to let Madison go first because I, I can just hear your the cogs in your brain going, what the fuck? Go ahead. So, I mean, they're hearing screams from them throwing pieces of the game into the in, into fire? Like, what, what the hell? Well, that's bullshit on many different levels, and I think Brian doesn't have as much experience with Dungeons & Dragons as I do, but I think he can tell you why. Because they're pewter? <laughs> well, I was going to say, number one, the pieces they're talking about, yes, they were made of pewter back in the day, but the big problem is, look, okay, you've seen him holding those books, right, Madison? Yeah. What else do you see besides those books? Nothing. Nothing. Okay. You want to know why? Because there's no, there's no figures it's game, not right? a fucking board game there are no pieces it's role, it's role play it's role play right you use the books and paper and a pencil and dice right yeah there well, are no pieces what well, i know what he's talking about oh i do too but i just want to make him sound like an well, asshole he's to, what he's trying to do is he's con, he's trying to complete he's trying to uh mix miniatures and role play or something so, like, so or what, something like Hero you, Quest. Okay, yeah. I was wondering, I was wondering what you were talking about because I, I think my dad, I found a board game my dad had when I was younger, and I know it wasn't like Dungeons and Dragon, but it was like a role playing type of game, and it had like little die cast figures. Okay, so Hero Quest uh, back in the day came with little plastic miniatures, and you it had still does it still does, and you had okay. char you had character cards, you had the barbarian, you had the magician, yes. you had the thief, yeah, yeah. But then there was also little characters like plastic, like skeletons and zombies yes. and monsters. Yes. And it was a board game. It's called Hero Quest. That's yeah. not the same as Dungeons and Dragons. Dungeons and right. Dragons does not have pieces like that. I mean, you can buy the pewter miniatures and paint them up, you know, and you can use them on tiles uh, for knowing where your character's at and, and like the range of your attacks and all that. But nobody I ever played with in my whole life, we never used miniatures. That's why I'm calling I mean, this out. These chuck they don't even know what they're talking about. I've not even played Dungeons and Dragons and I thought it was role playing. I didn't think it came with figures. It doesn't. I mean, I've 
played, like I said, for um, you know most of my life. Uh, if you ever want to play sometime, I can show you how. It's a lot of fun. Don't listen yeah, to these chuckle folks. Yeah, interested. <laughs> but anyway, here we go. <laughs> would drop out of life. They didn't want to study anymore. Uh, what, what are the pieces, for instance? Well, this game affects the most intelligent of our children. And the pieces include white witches, wizards, no, no, necromancers, no. The, the clerics, that type of thing. It includes evil wizards. It's a white versus black witchcraft. No. The good versus evil is white versus black witchcraft. And Anton LaVey, the writer of the Satanist Bible, says there no. is no such thing as white witchcraft. Well, being a Satan worshiper, he should know. Yeah, he should know. That, that uh, Brian, 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 go ahead and say what we always say about Anton LaVey. Uh, what, he was a coked up... Um Coked up syphilis, uh, syphilis ridden nutball. Yeah, thank you. That's exactly what I'm saying. Coked up syphilis fiend. There you go. Um, I, I I got a question. Go for it. And I'm I'm being dead serious. If you're a Christian, why would you believe anything that someone from the Church of Satan said? That's what. That's a great point. Yeah. Yeah. That's a great point. Why would Aaron you even believe? That? Yeah. This goes back to what you were saying earlier, Jay. This is, I mean, they're contradicting everything they're saying. That's, oh, it gets worse. It does, but yeah, Brian, that's a great, I didn't even think about that. That That's a great point. I mean, why would you even care what somebody in that world says? I mean, that, 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 why, why even bring that up? I mean, you're, you're just, you're doing more damage when you break this shit down piece by piece like we're doing tonight. You're doing more damage than you are good. I mean, you're just right. making yourself look stupid. Yeah. All the power from Satan is going to create evil and havoc. And what it shows is it shows a good versus evil, that good has about the same equality of power as evil, and they come head on, head on in collision. Where that's not the outline we see in the Bible. We see a good that is all-powerful, that has taken dominion of the world, that created the world. Yes. And we see Satan who's been defeated. Absolutely. And that's what we want our children to know, that Jesus is greater than Satan. He right. has won all the way. He, he's, he's the the conqueror. Like I said, yeah. I, I think these guys, here, I mean, cassettes. I think on the uh, one hand, they have a decent a message. Like They're just going about it completely uneducated. Educated. Yeah, they just don't. Yeah, they don't know what they're talking about. They do not know what the hell they're talking. about. helped me with my boy who was involved with D and D at a private high school, which promoted D and D as part of their attractive strategic game club. She says, for a period of about six months, we lost Tonio, our son. He became rebellious, disrespectful, lethargic. He made sneering faces at us and carried with him a very hostile spirit that could be felt wherever he went in the house. After much sorrow, Tonio finally let go of D&D &D only after his father forbid the game as his day's pastime. He couldn't make it. It just sounds like a teenager. She said he had put aside really? studies for this game. <laughs> now, I, I, I bet he was getting hair in really weird places, game, too. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. That not only is it a game now, but the cartoons, which the children even identify more strongly with, are now coming up with D&D &D cartoons. Of the okay, two things real quick. Number one... The cartoon has dick all to do with the game. I have the cartoon on DVD. I like it. I'm not saying anything bad about it. It doesn't have shit to do with the fucking game. Okay. I just use characters from the game. No. Or made characters. No. That are based no. by the roleplay characters. No. They, they basically, they, they created all new characters. I mean, there, there are certain characters that, that will show up in the show, like bad oh, guy sure. characters and stuff, but the heroes are all made up. They're, they're, there's, there's, that's the beautiful thing about Dungeons & Dragons. I mean, in the novels, yes, there are hero characters because, I mean, you can't tell a story, you know, uh, about right. your, your character. I can't tell a story about your character. I don't know anything about your character. But, right. The show, they just made up the characters. Okay, uh, and number two, the reason that schools would promote Dungeons & Dragons in, in clubs like that is twofold. Number one, it encourages uh, imagination and creativity. Mm -hmm. And number two, it promotes mathematics. I mean, that's why it was always the nerds and the geeks that played D&D, because &D, I'm sorry, right. all you jocks out there that's had your heads rammed into each other so much that you don't know what 2 plus 2 is, it was too smart for you guys to play it. I mean, uh, they've dumbed the game down a lot in 5th edition. Uh, well, actually, since 3rd edition. 3rd edition was dumbed down. But in 2nd edition, I mean, you had to calculate mathematics to 
determine what your character did and everything. And that's why it was perceived as a nerd game. But uh, that's why it was promoted, if that's even true. I, I don't remember any schools around here ever promoting it. But that, No, I don't, yeah. I don't remember it. I mean... I know, obviously, it's a different generation than me, but I don't remember any clubs promoting that. Well, I'm going to move on from D&D. Cause, I, mean, I was, uh, was going to say, we've pretty much said everything we can say about their... Uh, <laughs> oh, Lord, Black Star! Yeah. All right, we'll see where we're at right here. ...the occult to younger and younger children in a very real way. Well, let's... I want to get to the sectors. Figures. I see one on the screen here, which we call Black Star. Can you tell us about him? Black Man, I tell him that good. Blatantly I'm better than Jerry. On the market today. Yeah, much, much better. <laughs> My cat's much better than Jerry. <laughs> Man, fuck Jerry. <laughs> alien demon. This glows in the dark, right? Now, the average child will own... Alien no, demon. No, it fucking doesn't. <laughs> Slim Rod's response early. No, it fucking doesn't. ...to 12 of these glow-in-the-dark alien demons here. Alien demons. They don't look in the dark. That's what I'm saying. He keeps saying alien demons. What the hell? ...and he wakes up... I don't remember him glowing in the dark. No, they had accessories that glowed in the dark. Glow in the dark. And some of the side gate figures would glow in the dark. But not, but not the alien demons. <laughs> oh, there you go. Cultic. Oh, my God. What was the one, Brian, that they watched? Was it Transformers where they were saying that there's nothing in, uh, inherently demonic? G.I. Joe. Look at that. This is this is my evidence right here. Right here is my evidence. Toy series, of course, they they come out so fast it's pitiful. Here's another one, uh, another uh, man to beast transformation, where you can turn around the head inside, and uh, these seem to be very no, you can't. Their overtones. Of course, transforming from a man <laughs> they to don't... an animal is a is a okay. Pause this. Okay. All right, here we go. Right. <laughs> they can't even read the fucking package. It literally says what Brian, Brian, they can't even read their own fucking notes, man. Okay, do you think they're going to take time to read the fucking package? No, they're not. They're now, not. see, in Facebooks, in Facebooks, this this is my prime example of one of them picking out something that looked cool or popular. In Facebooks, was never popular. No, it, it was kind of it kind of came and went real fast. Yeah, but the gimmick was you pulled the figures waist apart, you know, pulled their legs down, and their face would suction on to a skull or something underneath it. Yeah, it created a, like, their face was kind of like a, uh, like a, a, a really soft plastic, and it created a suction, like, like Brian said, when you pulled the legs down, it would suction the air in, and it would, like, mold to the, the head underneath. Interesting. Yeah, these figures never caught on. They're impossible to find in good shape because the the faces were made out of rubber and they they dry rotted. Right. Oh yeah. But these assholes can't even read the package. That's what gets me. See, I'm, I'm excited. Okay. I, I want to get to the GI Joe Transformers and Sectar stuff because that that to me that's the meat and potatoes of this whole thing, and I think it's coming up pretty soon. Yeah. Let's look at uh, another one here, which we found in the store. Sectar. Yep. Here we go. Okay. So the other night, and I can't remember if it was actually on the podcast or not, we were trying to explain to Madison what sectars are okay. or what they yeah, were. I, I think it was on the podcast. I think it was. Yeah, so, I think I about it. Yeah, so now you'll actually get to see, you know, because you were all confused. Where, you know, I was joking about shoving your hand up the bug's ass and everything. You're like, what the fuck? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but no, you'll, you'll get to see because, uh, Gary and his seventy funk glory fucking demonstrates how to how to do oh all that. Oh God! All right, here we go. Here we go. And it says now the battle is in your hands. Very interesting. Can they see that? Let me take this out of the box and uh, I'll show you that it actually does some tricks. Now this is where a child can identify with this and actually. Does it spin? It That's a neat trick. And uh, put it on his hand, no less. So let me see if I can put my hand in here. Oh no! Unbelievable. Get my fingers in the different glove parts here, and then this creature actually begins to uh, open its mouth and move its legs. Isn't that incredible? It's amazing. Its mouth isn't it's opening. It's long. amazing. Here, you discovered uh, puppetry. Puppetry is uh, isn't that is, amazing? Satanic. And do you remember those uh, verses in the Book of Revelation? 
about the flying beast with the riders on them. Oh the my god. Beast with the riders on them. So you this know, is the winged, the winged horses. This that wasn't made to be taken, taken from, uh, literally. Sure, yeah, like holy shit. I cannot believe it. Well, if this is the direction that the occultic toys are taking, what is, where are we going? Where, where do you think it's going to? Well, it's going to bring the occult into every home, and you know that that uh, that the Lord. Jerry, get back to your position instead of getting out there in your car. <laughs> verses nine through eleven on the occult, and I'd like to read those. Yeah, what does now, God say? When thou art come into the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee, thou shalt not learn to do after the abominations of those nations. There shall not be found among you anyone that maketh his son or. His really quickly, I just got to point out. If this guy knows his Bible as well as he claims and had this prepared, why is he stammering over his words? Does he just not know how to read? No, I don't think he does. I think we've established this. Yeah. Yes. Because, you know, okay. All right. They don't even have to the read a fucking box that cover. Through fire, or that uses divination, or an observer of the times, or an divination. Or witch, divination. Have you ever heard of divination? Consulter with nope. No, I've heard of div uh, divination. Divination. Abomination unto the Lord. So, actually, another scripture says that if you well, bring Jerry an just left. or an accursed thing into your house, then you, <laughs> you will get the be fuck out of there. Like it is. Would you say these toys are cursed to God? <coughs> oh, I would guarantee it. The toys and the cartoon. So the minute you turn, so bugs are accursed. Broken. This scripture here. Yeah, what the hell? And, and puppetry. Child to watch this on television and also brings these toys into the home or buys them for the. Uh, Sectars never caught on, and, and the cartoon was very. Ve it's very rare to find the cartoon. Dude, the, the cartoon, it didn't even make it a full season. I think it was like, what, three episodes or something? Really? I don't know. Yeah, it never caught on. I'm surprised that the, the, the toy looked really cool. You're taking counsel from oh, the toys were awesome. They were. Now I think a lot of this can even go back if we might divert. Well, if you notice, I don't. I don't think they even show any clips from the Sektar's cartoon because they probably couldn't get a hold of any of it. Probably not. Uh, what is this creature we're looking at, at on our screen? From uh, well, this is Squidhead. He's from Star Wars, and as you know, Star Wars told us that the Force would be with us. It, uh, uh, and of course, the oh my god, they're dissing. I forgot about the Star Wars. Wars I did too. I did too. To describe the power they received from Satan, uh, characters like Darth Vader, who Holy shit. exactly like the ancient Norse god Odin, and uh, Obi Wan Kenobi. And there's a form of witchcraft called Obi Witchcraft, in which chanting Obi 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 over and over again releases the power into the witches' lives. You're saying that these were actually what? Taken, this is taken from a Norse god. Uh, he looks very much yes, like him. it looks a lot like Darth Vader. Uh, Show me. Go back one slide and look at that Norse god, but uh, we can't go backward yeah. on these. That's so Yoda. That's not a Norse god. Right now. Jerry, they you're fired. They can't go backwards. The Zen Master. It just happened course, for some reason. Can't go backwards. Buddhism. Zen Buddhism says there's one force in the world, and it can be either used for good or evil. And uh, and Yoda's called the Zen master. He's always seen with serpents around him, or serpents. No, he's around. not. Yeah, look at the serpents. No, he his no, he's not. He's, he's a three-fingered, three-toed beast. So he has the two fingers and the thumb, which, from my information, means Satan is lord. Yeah. Now let's take what? Right now oh, with, uh, God. Another creature by Steven Spielberg, I believe it is. From e. They're hating on E.T. E. now? Yeah. What, do you, what can we say about him? What the hell? E.T. smashed box office records in 1982 by doing $318 million. $318 million? Mm. Yes, it was a camouflage occult movie including uh, levitation, psychic healing, mind control, uh, mental telepathy, that type of thing. E.T. also included some inferences to homosexuality within, what? Uh, what? within the movie. What? What? Yeah, I don't remember this. I don't remember that. Uh, this is uh, E.T. E. But e. fuck e. Elliot. I don't remember that. <laughs> <laughs> that's how he got. The, that's how he flew on his bicycle, bro. One of many. Now, E.T. I mean, we, we homosexuality. Saw what the hell? Power in his finger. Yes. And uh, levitation ability, and he just brought all of this into the minds and thinking of the children. Would we say that this is a a plot to? Uh, well, I think one of the things they tried to do on this this movie is to make people accept that there's more Christ than just one. You know, may, many times that the Hindus and they believe that there's a. I, I don't a, a remember this message in ET. No. No. Times. 
And so I think that's what happened in this movie. It was a, uh, a falsification of Christ coming to earth. No, okay. I, I never, I never you know, got that from that movie at all. Are we skipping on? Because this is just, yeah, yeah. yeah this is getting. I swear he's up to his elbow and his ass pulling this yeah. stuff out. Yeah, 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 he is talking shit. Power man and son of Satan, son of Satan. Now they're getting kind of blatant. And this is the burning hand. Now in the burning hand, we have a depiction of Jesus Christ crucified on a pentagram of five Whoa, what, what comic book is this? Unbelievable. That it's is not a Satan, and that is not Jesus. Satan. No, it's not. The sided star is a pentagram, and it represents the goat's head, and here it actually, do you see the direction that the cartoons are going? And the there, There's a problem, though. There's a problem. The pentagram, if, if that was actually a, a satanic symbol, it, it's upside down. The pentagram is. It, 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 I'll go back. I'll go back. You all know what a pentagram looks like, right? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Let's, let's look. It's upside down. Yeah. It just looks this like part. A star. This part is supposed to be on the bottom. If it's a satanic symbol, that part because that represents the goat's, uh, the the beard, the chin, and these oh, represent yeah, yeah, yeah. the horns. Yeah. The, that uh, or the ears, and that represents. <laughs> yeah, the horns. it is upside down. It's upside down. Holy it's shit! It's upside down. Yeah. All right, let's go on. Let's see if we can find the G.I. Joe and Transformers. Jerry didn't put the image in there correctly. Oh. And a cartoon like Bugs Bunny Roadrunner, which averaged about 11 violent acts. I would like to say also that in the Bible, God says that he cast Lucifer, Satan, out of heaven because he was so filled with violence. Oh, here we go. Rocket launchers because he was so filled with violence. Okay. Here we go. G.I. Joe, we probably got a lot to say about this one, I'm sure. Oh, this is where they said Rambo was bloodshed follows bloodshed. I was absolutely amazed recently when I went into the toy stores and I saw that there were complete racks filled with grenades, uh, rocket launchers, all kinds of knives and guns and, uh, I mean, squirt guns that uh, are so occultic in that, are not occultic, but violent in that they depict Real He's so hung up on it, he can't even <laughs> not let it. Yeah, yeah, he can't. I'm glad you said it, because I was thinking it. I'm, I'm, I'm wanting to get to the G.I. Joe stuff, so Brian will have more to say. Introducing the leaders of the Crimson Guard, the evil twin brothers Tomax and Sabot, and they're getting away in the Cobra Ferret. The Joes will stop them. With the G.I. Joe mini G.I. Joe. Look at all those prototypes. I know, the right? The twin brothers sold together Cobra Ferret, G.I. Joe mini tank, and Joe Bigger sold separately from Hasbro. Oh, Team five days a week as they battle the evil forces of Cobra. Monday, Tuesday, I remember Tuesday, this commercial. Thursday, and Friday. It's the most exciting and Well, Phil, as we're watching these G.I. Joe commercials, <laughs> can't we say that they're also helping sell toys and even cereal? Oh, yeah, the, the cartoons and the commercials are helping. I got John a news blast for them. I think we ought to show the toy. That's no what, shit. That, that's what they were created for, numb nuts. There used to be a guy that wore khakis and uh, was just sort of a soldier, but now he's taking on an occultic look, hasn't he? Yeah, they're slowly, Bullshit. They're slowly weaving in the occult. And Shall I pause and let you explain, Brian? Different things like that within yes, the, please. Oh, yeah. Sort of All right, so I just love that they pick Zartan and say he was a normal soldier and now he's a cultic. Please, 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 by all means, you got the floor. The character himself isn't a cultic. Well, he uses martial arts, so I guess he is. Um, <laughs> he jumps a lot, too. <laughs> yeah. Um, he's a ventriloquist, so I guess that's evil. Um, yeah, that's one step below puppetry. The, the the toy had a gimmick where it would change color in sunlight. He would turn blue. And um, the file card was controversial because it said he was a paranoid schizophrenic and a bunch of uh, mental health organizations went ape shit and they had to change it. But no, he's not fucking occultic. He, so they had to change. He's got, 
from turning from blue. No, no, they had to change his file card where they said he was schizophrenic because oh, okay. people yeah. did ape shit. Yeah, they they said it was it was mocking mental illness. Okay, but no, the the blue thing was even in the cartoon. Uh, but Zartan's whole bag is he's a master of disguise. Yeah, oh, and sense. in the comic book he used holographs. Okay, or holograms. So that's why he turned blue, right? Okay. Yeah. All right, so he's not a cultic. Let's just yeah. All right, here we oh, go. Oh shit! You know, see what else we can pick apart. Futuristic look as we see on this uh, figure on our monitor here. Uh, he's taking on the look of the future soldier, so yes, to speak. Very much. So. And a lot of the movies are. What future are you talking the about? Really <laughs> Wait, Kyle Reese? Is that you? No, no, that's not Kyle Reese. That, uh, yeah, I, I, ever, I'm, I'm, I'm looking at this. It just looks like a soldier. He just looks like a soldier. Yeah, that's that's what I would think. First glance at this, it just looks like a soldier. Yeah, the soldier of the future wore turtlenecks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> which which yeah. character is this, Brian? Short Fuse. Okay, Short Fuse. And what did Short Fuse do? He was a mortar soldier. Which is why he's got... A mortar. Thank you. Okay, all right. So, But that that's which high... Call- mm, that's really high tech. Futuristic. Yeah. The future still. Uh, what I call the barbarization of our children, where through uh, through these violent movies and violent cartoons, they're teaching our children that the way to handle problems is through violence. And now, also the violence is helping sell cereal, correct? Right. And here we have a GI Joe cereal uh, box and. What we're really concerned about is not selling cereal, though. We're concerned about the trend towards teaching the children to have violent attitudes. Oh, yes. And, and we see things such as flat gum, you know, that look like shrapnel coming what, what, out. Now, wait a minute. Flat gum. Yeah, it's, it comes in a pouch, and it looks like pieces of shrapnel. Uh, in fact, one, I was... Is he talking about never... Big League... Is he talking about Big League Chew? I don't know what he's talking about. Yeah, I, I don't remember this, I was thinking and I don't think it ever happened. I've never seen this gum that he's talking about. Uh, Big League Chew was uh, made to look like tobacco. Yeah. No, he's the way the one he's talking about makes no sense because I've never heard of it. Okay, somebody make a note. Does anybody does anybody have like a pad of paper and stuff or or, or Madison? Can you on your computer there make a little notepad? Uh, we need to Google flak gum. Flak gum. After this is over, flak. I want yeah, I want to look this up. And I want I want to see because I don't want to disturb, uh, you know, our our uh, production quality here, like Jerry. But after it's over, we'll look this shit up and we'll see what we can find on it. Because I'm curious. Got it. All right, here we go. Listening to one uh, commentator talk about the feelings within Russia, and he said that the Russians were were more upset about this new trend in America, the children wearing the fatigues and being more militaristically minded than they were about our nuclear arms. You're kidding me. Yeah, very much so. In other words, I'm going to call bullshit. Uh, why is that a bad thing, that your enemies are scared of you? Well, I, I still want sources cited. Uh, who was yeah. it, and what what was this uh, that you read, or that you, you know, I, I want to know, because I... And I'm with you. I mean, back in the 80s, man, we were taught to get under your desk and cover because any moment a nuclear blast could kill all of us. And I'm like, man, hiding under this desk ain't going to do shit, okay? But, yeah. um, you know, I mean, it's, you wanted you wanted the Russians to be afraid of you. I mean, that was... Oh, we, yeah. As kids, when we played with G.I. Joe, man, we, we got our our uh, camo pants and shirts on and we were you know playing in the woods and and you know in the creeks and everything you know we wanted to feel badass we wanted you know russia to be afraid of us that was part of america back then you know i mean yeah. oh shit guys they did uh they did make gi joe gum to want to carry guns around and to shoot people and to rocket launch what was it called flat gum no it was just uh I don't, I don't necessarily have a name for it, but it, it came in like a little canteen container. It's supposed to look like a little canteen. I don't and remember it, that. It's like little pieces of gum. They're like green. I uh, remember that. Yeah, Joe Bubble Gum. I may remember it if I see it. After after this is over, you can link me and we'll take a look at it and show it on screen okay. and everything. And so forth. 
And that's what bothered me as I went through the toy store seeing that parents were buying all of these. Where the fuck did Gary go to the toy store? To well, that's the third time he's talked about it. Supposed to be shrapnel that, uh, yeah. Yeah, here's a, uh, it's during that fasting. That Gary did some fasting, too. And, of course, Rambo is an extremely popular movie, but this is a squirt gun that's battery-operated and squirts 30 feet. But that's not so bad. It's just the children... 30 feet? Holy shit. That ...guns are in now. That, uh, yeah. Shooting yeah, they were battery-powered. Really and, and, uh, Damn, it makes squirt guns like that now. No. Like this ...have glorified violence, and, and the hero never gets hurt. I mean, he's hardly ever even scathed, you know? It's, it doesn't give a real picture of war. And people say, well, the Bible is a violent book. But if you that's because if Rambo got his nuts blowed off in the first act, we wouldn't be rooting for him because he'd be fucking in the hospital and shit. Nobody wants to see that. Right. Dead. Yeah, dead too. If you look at the Bible, the violence took place over hundreds of years, not not such in a compacted 90-minute package with thousands of acts of violence or a compacted 30-minute cartoon with 80 violent acts on the half hour. Well, I think, Phil... Why is he talking out the side of his mouth? I don't know. He kills me the way he friend that is leading towards what we now call uh, our Transformer toys. Which oh, here we go. From... Uh, uh, a, a weapon to a robot type of creature right. and we're going a to robot's a creature to guys about robots and transformers <laughs> but let's talk about some of the more innocuous things that are on the market that are leading into these things uh, I mean what could we call uh, something like Smurfs is there anything occultic or dangerous about Smurfs? Smurfs. Well, Smurfs happens to be the most popular Saturday morning cartoon since the Bugs Bunny Roadrunner hour it came it's just entered into uh, uh, a long-term run, and it's hit an hour and a half on Saturday morning cartoons. Ah, uh, the French. We need to look at. First of all, it, you'll notice that they're depicted as blue with black lips. But I don't remember them having black lips, do you? I you don't either. I thought they were blue all blue. Black. In other words, these are depictive of uh, dead creatures. Right. And another thing is that Bull Smurfs are all male community. And you say, oh, there's Smurfette. She's a female. Well, in one cartoon, she was depicted as transforming from a male to a female through magic. I no, she that. wasn't. No, she wasn't. Okay. All right. So Gargamel created Smurfette. Right. Yep. She was the evil Smurf. She had black hair. She was supposed to go spy on the Smurfs and lead them back to Gargamel so he could turn them to gold or eat them, whatever the fuck he wanted to do that day. Because right. it never was, was clear. He, he always wanted to do one or the other. And she turned good, and then she That's got the awesome. blonde hair, and she... That, I, was she ever a dude, Brian? Do you remember her ever being a dude? I don't remember that at all. What no dude? I don't remember that either. All right, so okay, all right, so we're throwing you know transgenderism and shit in here too. All right, let's go. Magical <laughs> power, and so the only female in the Smurfs is transformed from a male. She was not born a female. No, what you're telling me then is that even Smurfs carry a homosexual connotation. In that most of them are. Oh my God! I believe so. But we're, we're not going to blatantly say. Gary, your open collar shirt has a homosexual connotation. <laughs> hear that? He said. Well, he said we're not going to blatantly say Smurfs. that Smurfs are because evil, Smurfs evil creatures. Cartoon, the whole uh, storyline is that the Smurfs don't believe in trouble. him. And every time they get in yeah. trouble, they run to Papa Smurf, who whips up a spell or an incantation to get them out. In fact, he said the name Beelzebub a no numerous times in the cartoon, and he whips up this spell, spell or incantation spiel? And, and draws them out of their problems spiel. through <laughs> witchcraft. And then they have an enemy called Gargamel. Now, Gargamel, in a recent episode, I saw him draw a five-pointed star, the pentagram, on the ground. Right. He lit candles at each point, which is an actual witchcraft practice. He started to dance inside the pentagram, chanting a magical chant. At that point, a book opened up across the room, and something left the book and entered his physical body, giving him power to levitate and to, to do battle. It's always levitation smurfs. with this oh, chuckle. No. Yeah, he really so, goes to levitation a lot. Has gone a I love how he described this like it actually well, happened. <laughs> I was walking down the street the other day, and you'll never believe what Gargamel was doing. And it, it was started he started levitating. Jerry didn't get it on film because Jerry sucks. <laughs> <laughs> and some things have taken place in Care Bears that need to be talked about. And one of those things took place in the Care Bear movie. 
If we could look at some slides, oh, there, no. maybe we could uh, get an idea. What yeah, they talk about, about everything in this. Dude, I'm telling you, I mean, there's nothing too yeah, wholesome or not wholesome yeah, enough for them to. I mean, they just yeah. around. Apparently, turmoil in the toy box. He goes into cabbage patch again. Holy shit! He, he goes even further. Tempts him to open the book. Right. And he opens it up, and the face starts to talk to him and starts to teach him how to practice the occult. In a Care Bear comic book? The occult. Yes. And then he tries the to Care Bear. They're talking about the movie, book, but again, it's a comic book. The face coming out of the book. The, book. the occult book talks to him, guides him, leads him. You see him here looking over a cauldron. And what he's looking over the cauldron, he's looking to see the, the children and see what they're doing. And at the end, the Care Bears, to take care Much of the Much like Phil at the mall. Use the Care Bear Stare, <laughs> which is a power beam coming from the center of their stomach. Now, this is what I'm seeing in Care That's Bears. That's just indigestion, like Phil. Their own religion. That children are to tell these Care Bears their problems. All right, shall we skip? Yeah. Yes. Uh, the Care Bears. Care Bears. Oh, God, the littles. I ain't gonna get in on the littles. They're like little uh, elves or something like that, and they're special. Little elves. We bring in a call paganism that's being taught to our children through these these little innocuous cartoons. Now, there's one called My Pony. This now, my, my Pony. pony. Yeah, yeah. Not now, My Little Pony. Just My store. Pony. It was a and My Pony. Into that toy store yeah. and, and you see these <laughs> no. <laughs> no, there was. It. This is another indicator that they can't read. And there's right. Different ponies, and you notice, okay? Yeah. For little girls, we saw my a, pony. Uh, a pan, which is a half man, half horse, and he takes a horse and a pony. Symbols. What? What? A pony? Do use magic. Oh God! Now they're gonna talk about rainbow bright. And uh, I mean, five sided star, and it's upside down. Which I'm what? What? Do. They hate stars, man. I'm telling you, the five sided star that's upside down. That that doesn't look like it's upside down to me, but okay. Video cut of the robots and transformers. So let's come back right. after uh, a short robot craze here. Okay, Phil, who is this uh, creature, sort of that they're all talking to in this? Well, this is the king of, of the land that they lived in. Now he is dead. That's his Did we skip the transformer he's part, or, or are they getting into it after Voltron? Yeah, he's getting yeah. them guidance, and he's finding out information and telling them where the keys are that will activate this Voltron robot. Now, mm. Voltron is a robot designed to defend the universe. Again, everything is, is going to is this, take care of the whole universe. This is the toy, then, the Voltron toy that uh, we're going to be discussing. He just right happens now. to have a toy of it. We'll Dude, I'm telling you, man. But, uh, these toy companies get made bank the off these Voltron chuckle fucks. Oh, yeah, they did. <laughs> Uh, we come back from the you know, I was always taught. I was always taught that if you didn't believe in something, don't support it. And what do these guys do? They just went out and bought everything. Cover the message that Phil's been sharing. Yeah, I mean they're really promoting it. From occulty cartoons to toys to innocuous little figures to the new craze in comic books, and I'd like to a shocking interview. Many of you may want to share this. Oh, here we go. Yeah, here we go. Friends. Evil powers are trying to brainwash this generation of evil children, powers. but the truth will set them free. You can take that truth to them. Let's pray that churches across the nation will rise up and expose this deception of a generation. Today's interview includes materials taken and now offered in three cassette messages. Does it come with all the toys too? Hell no. Your child. <laughs> they gotta keep those in their toy boxes. <laughs> Gary's got to put them back in his collection. The third cassette is titled Dungeons and Dragons by Gary Greenwald. As a bonus, the Eagle's Nest is including the book Breaking Spiritual Dullness and Barriers in Children, an outstanding expose of many of the evil deceptions being perpetrated on young people today. You'll also receive Phil Phillips' newspaper titled Child Effects, updating you on the latest occultic attacks on your children. To receive all three cassettes, the book and the newspaper, simply request the Child Deception Offer and send any donation of $15 or more to the Eagle's Nest. Any donation, $15 or more. What if any donation, what if I don't want to donate 15 What if I want to donate 50 cents or 15 cents? Is that not good enough? No, it's not good yeah. enough. 
not good enough. Not good enough. So, I, I mean, that's their way of saying, okay, we're not going to come out and charge you fifteen dollars for this, but we're charging you fifteen dollars for this. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, they gotta they gotta pay for all those promotions and, uh, they did on the video. Quickly, who Voltron is? Yeah, we gonna get into Voltron. Clark, let's cut away right now and see the violence that's depicted. Yeah. All right, here we go. We got transfer. There's no doubt that there's witchcraft here, and Voltron is very similar to what we call the Transformer series, isn't he? Yes, this is one of many robot series. Some of them are sexually oriented. Some of them have have actually no oriented. Or what? Anything in it. The Transformers, I'm not Hang on. in it yet, but What Brian? Yeah. What 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 robots are sexually oriented? That's what I'm saying. I have no idea. I don't know. Dildo. He said Transformers, do, <sighs> Transformers weren't a cult. Did he already say I that? Did he already say that part? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I guarantee you he's he's gonna turn around and say it is. Uh, yeah, here we go. Let's see. But it's an extremely violent show, and in fact, it's the only. Let's go back to what we call the Transformers. Uh, I want to hear him say that. Yes, this is one of many robot series. Some of them are sexually oriented. Some of them have have no occult or, Which or anything in it. The Transformers. I've not seen a cult in it yet, but it's an extremely okay. violent show, and in fact. Okay. You heard him say it. We're going to keep track. Yeah. We're going to see if we're right. He said, "There's no occultic." In, in Transformers. He hadn't seen any. Okay? Everybody yeah. heard that. Alright, here we yeah, go. Yeah, I heard it. The only violent cartoon that actually shows killing in it that I've seen, and as we'll see in the next clip, you'll see someone get shot and killed. Let's go into a... Don't remember anybody dying in Transformers other than Transformers. the movie. Let's cut away right now and see the violence that's depicted. Raw materials or energy? Oh, uh, we only store energy here. That's just what I wanted to hear. Decepticons, You you can't do this. Out of my way, fool! Leave him alone. Yeah, that's a fatal yeah, shoulder shot. He, he absolutely died from that, didn't he? You, you monster! Is there are cultic overtones here, but definite violence and kill. Whoa! Did I call it? Oh! He just contradicted himself. Yes, yes. And yes. Uh, Brian, do I need to explain this or do you want to? You go ahead. Nobody fucking died right there. They were showing they were showing Orion Pax, Ariel, and uh, Dion. Okay, Orion Pax was uh, rebuilt into Optimus Prime. Uh, Ariel was re uh, rebuilt into Alita 1, and there's fan debate on who Dion was turned into. Some people say uh, Ultra Magnus, some people say somebody else, but none of them died. Okay. And I just I just wanted to gloat a little bit and say, yeah, there's nothing occultic in Transformers, but oh my god, are the occultic overtones? I mean, holy shit. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's what I've been waiting for this whole episode. I wanted to get to that. All right. And this could lead the children to think that killing is okay, I'm sure. Oh, yeah. So what are we as parents? What, what oh, yeah. do we do? What is our response? <laughs> well, the responsibility lies on the parents to train up their child, to, to guide that child. And All right, guys, I'm going to say, right, we've been do, we've been at this for a while. I, if you want to stop it here and, and process our thoughts and talk yes. about this yeah. a little bit, because, uh, yes. yeah, this is, uh, I'm going to stop it right here on Woodhead. Given that dick sucking look right there, I mean that, that's just perfect. We're just hanging on right there. All right, so Madison, let, let's let's start with you. You've never seen this before. Uh, you weren't there to experience it in the eighties. What are you thinking of this? How did you guys survive this shit? Is what I want to know. <laughs> I we mean, got lucky. Yeah, that's that's we insane. Got lucky. I mean, we I had, mean, everybody, 
every bit of that, it, it, he contradicted himself. There was no no facts or anything, no proof of him showing anything to back up his facts. I mean, it was all just attack, you know? It was all occultic. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead, Brian. Basically, it's exactly what I've what I've said it was for years and years. It's an attack on anything worldly. Anything popular. Anything popular. What what Gary and uh, Phil Phillips, whose parents must have hated him to give him the name Phil Phillips. Um, what they're afraid of is that Transformers, G.I. Joe, Sectars, He-Man, 13 Ghosts of Scooby-Doo, comic books will all be more popular than the Bible with the Christian youth. Mm. That's what they're afraid of. Problem so is, it. They're, they're actually making it worse. Yeah, absolutely. Because what they're, what they're doing is they're making it forbidden fruit. Right. And that's just going to attract people, more people to, you know, want to go, go get the exactly. products. I mean, they promoted literally every single toy from what they talked about. They did. And, th and that's what the point that I was making earlier. It's like, it is th if they have kids, which I don't know if they do or not, I have no idea anything about their personal lives, but if they've got kids, man, they must be the most repressed kids. And you know what happens to kids when they grow up and they've been repressed? Those are the kinds of kids. Well, they go wild. They go they wild. Those, up, those yeah. are the kinds of kids that either, as Madison was getting ready to say, they shoot up drugs, or if they're a girl, they shoot up dick and get pregnant at 13 or 14 years old. I mean, you know, am I wrong? No, you're not. No, no I, I knew several people who's, who had lived... Uh, very repressed lives, and when they went to college, they went fucking wild. Well, let me tell you another little little story here. That you remember the story I told you earlier about my dad's ex wife. Yeah, she had a son who was a few years older than me. I'm going to say he was three, maybe four years older than me, and uh, he was repressed like that. And my half sister was repressed like that. I mean, they were brought up to believe all this shit. Basically, the same shit that these chuckle fucks are talking right here. Well, I'm not going to say his name. I saw almost, I, I caught myself. But got her son ended up getting a girl pregnant when she, he was like 15 or 16 years old. Oh, now, shit. now, do you want to know where he got her pregnant? Church. Certainly not in the butt. Boom. <laughs> say it again, Madison. Church. Yeah, they were at church. Called that. Yeah, they were at church. And he fucked her at church and got her pregnant. Oh yeah. And I'm just thinking, man, that is so much more wrong on so many levels. Yeah. So much more wrong than buying a toy. Well, I mean, if you, it, let's say like a little kid, if you, if you put a piece of chocolate on a counter and you look at that little kid and you're like, whatever you do, do not eat this chocolate. You, right. You're not allowed to. It's, it's the devil. And you walk off and leave that kid unsupervised, they're more than likely going to pick that chocolate up and eat it. Oh, definitely. Because you've you've striked their interest in you know towards that chocolate. Okay, why am I not supposed to eat that? Well, I kind of want to now. Yeah, it's I mean, it's, it made it a big deal. And kids won't even think, you know, why am I not supposed to have it? They're just it's, right. like you said. It, it, it's what you said initially. You've drawn their attention to it. Yeah. Absolutely. Made it a bigger issue than what it had to be. Yeah. You know, what What sticks with me, no matter what positive message that, you know, you know, the, the wooden wonder and um, Gary, uh, my you know, disco Gary may have, they, um, they came off as very heavy handed. They did. But, but what's even worse than that, I can handle heavy handed. What, what the, to me, was the worst part about this whole presentation was the lack of evidence, the lack of any kind yeah, of proof. they had nothing to back up I mean, what they were. If they were in a court, everything they said would be considered circumstantial. Right. Or hearsay. Yes. And it'd be thrown out. Yeah. I mean, it... 
they did have some evidence to back up like the comic book thing but even that was laughable at at best well i mean it's just where they didn't have the evidence is why they skipped around so much and they couldn't stay on one subject exactly they were yeah they were trying to okay we need to get to the next point because we got nothing to back this up with uh, yeah what's, they, uh, uh, what's uh what's that gum just type in gi joe gum and it should bring up it's like uh it looks like it's in a little canteen oh, okay, it's probably yeah, about, there it is there it is yeah. there it is Okay, I vaguely. And I mean, it's this. like it's like little pieces, but it doesn't look like shrapnel. No, it no, doesn't look like. It shrapnel. doesn't. It, it 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 really doesn't. Let's see. It just looks like chewing them, and I mean, it's in a canteen. It's not like it's in a grenade or anything. Um, there's a small problem with this. Okay, that is this not, gum came. That's two thousand. This gum. Yeah. It, it came out in the 2000s because that logo oh, was new. different. So it was way after. Yeah, that's, so there the, was, uh, that's not that's the real generation. American Hero logo. No, let's look up Flat Gum. They, did, they make, have, uh, did they make G.I. Joe... Uh, they made G.I. Joe cards, but did they come with gum in them? I don't no. think so, no. Wasn't there a card set that would come... Am I thinking of like baseball cards? You're thinking baseball think. cards, yeah. 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 Flat gum. Yeah, okay, oh, okay, okay. Yeah, the Rambo gum. I remember the Rambo gum. That doesn't look like shit. Oh, that, that just looks like fucking... Just looks like little square pieces. Oh. That's what they're talking about. Notice that's the, not even G.I. Yeah, Joe. Notice they didn't say Rambo, though. They just said no, flat they gum. Said G. I. Joe. They said G.I. Joe. They were referring to G.I. Joe. I mean, that, had, that has nothing to do with that. Wow. Okay. Okay. All right. So, I mean, well, this uh, tells me nobody right accused, there. Nobody accused these idiots of being um, factual. No. And that's that's <laughs> no, that's, that's the big problem with them is is there's just yeah there's no that's facts the most, there. That's the most factual thing about this is they don't have any facts. Yeah. Yeah. <sighs> well, gentlemen, and, go go ahead, Brian. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. No, the, I was going to say the, the amazing thing about this is there were people who bought into it. Oh yeah, that's crazy. Literally bought that's into crazy. it because I'm sure there's yeah, people they, out there that paid for this shit. Yeah, they donated fifteen dollars yeah. or more. Or more. Yeah, probably, probably way more. Yeah. If you donate twenty dollars, you get a gold star. Huh. <laughs> An upside down gold star. Oh no, I didn't even think about that. Holy shit! No, no gold star for you. No, no, because you might turn it upside down. That's cult. That's cultic. That's that's a cultic man. That's a cultic god. Jeez, yep. oh, man. All right, well, gentlemen. Uh, on that note, uh, is there anything else either one of you want to contribute to this? Because this this episode is is not as long as I thought it would be, but it's been going on for a while. Yeah. I think I, can't I really said think what anything. I had to say about it. <laughs> okay. Brian? I can't think of anything else to add. Uh, I'm, I'm kind of mentally uh, drained at the moment as far as this goes. I mean, this oh, is I just... Oh, I am too. Ooh, it's I been... Think I'm gonna go, I think I'm going to go shave my head, go cut down a tree, <laughs> and cut out a hairpiece from it. You got to put that third... You got to put that third eye in yeah. and go jumping... Yep. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, I gotta jump while I'm doing. <laughs> gotta it. do some jumping. <laughs> jumping jacks are the devil. But, uh, yes. On that note, we're going to call it here. Uh, we have some more things coming down the pipeline. Uh, as I said earlier, we do have a Twitter. Madison is in charge of that. Yes, uh, sir. We do have a Facebook page. Uh, if this does go on YouTube or uh, Daily Motion or any other video site, I will put description or uh, in the description. I'll put the links to all our social media, and hopefully, um, yeah, we'll bring Good some more. Follow, guys. Yeah, yeah. Like yeah. us, subscribe to us, help us out. Uh, we're just getting started again, and uh, it's been a lot of fun. But we are yes. going to call oh, yeah. it. Yep. Until next time, everyone. 
Later. See ya. Later. <laughs>